Coming to you live from Stewart, Florida, the greatest little town in the world, it's the award-winning, critically acclaimed Get Up and Go Show on AM 1450 WSTU. You're invited to call the show anytime at 772-220-9788. And now, broadcasting live from their palatial studios, here are your hosts, Evan and Bonnie. TGIF and the top of the morning to you and yours. Good morning, Americans. It's Friday. That's right. It is Friday. Friday. Listen, this is the way it is. That's right. It is Friday. That was really a productive segment. Wasn't All it? my segments are productive, Mr. President. Don't you dare ever say that. It is 6.08 on the Get Up and Go show with Evan and Bonnie. Mr. Clock, would you certify? It's now 6.08 a.m. That's right. 6.08 a.m. as Mr. Clock says and Bonnie TGIF and happy Friday to you. Happy Friday to you too, Evan mm. and Mr. Evan Nine. I do yeah. owe you a dollar this morning. Oh, really? I Why? I to get that dollar out of my purse. Oh, what happened? Pittsburgh won the Hall of Fame oh, they game did. yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, and keep your dollar. They beat Dallas. Give it to a charity. And they really broke Dallas's back 16-3 to oh, in that uh, pre- preseason game last night. Oh, so man. We'll give you the buck for nah, that. Nah, I don't need no buck. Give yeah. it to a charity. <laughs> give it, you know what? Give the dollar to Jaden for me, okay? Okay. Give that dollar to Jaden because you know what? He'll be tickled to death that he can go spend that dollar somewhere and go buy some candy. Yeah, he'll want a Slim Jim, I mm. think. Step into a Slim Jim, as the <laughs> macho man used to say. Did he say that? Yeah, he used to He used to do commercials uh, for uh, Slim Jim, oh. uh, snap into a Slim Jim. They were really, really good. Oh, yeah. Really yeah, good. and Slim Jims are good. I'm not sure they're good mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> um, well, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, whether they're good for you or not, I'm not sure. Jaden likes to get the uh, Slim Jim wrappers. He pulls uh-huh. that Slim Jim out and lets us eat it. But then he likes to cut the wrappers and, um, you know, form the wrappers into a form of lizard or like snake heads. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. He, he makes like a little creatures snake out of heads? them. Snake heads? Yeah, you know, like um, he likes little dragons, dinosaurs, things like that, maybe snakes. And he pretends that the uh, long, dangling wrapper mm. is some sort of a some sort of a creature. Okay, okay. <laughs> so very interesting. He likes to play with them and cut them up that way. Very interesting. I thought we'd talk about something kind of, un- and I'm proud of you for this. That what you shared with me this morning, because that's huge for you. Because I know how you are. Um, you have <laughs> decided to um, take the step and go get your COVID shot. Yeah, I've I'm been, very proud of you. I want you to know that I really thank am. Thank you, Evan. And I know it's wonderful. You you got the shot quite yeah. some time ago when yeah. you had to. You were going on the computer quite a while back to set up the appointments. Yeah, and yeah, way back when you only could get appointments. I was like frantic. You know, you saw me. I was working like five web browsers and the phone and yes. doing the morning show. And I finally got an appointment all the way down in Fort Lauderdale for the uh, for the COVID shot. No, did you? No, oh, you got the one time deal shot. I got the one shot. shot. I got okay. the one time deal shot down in Fort Lauderdale on March. Um, I have my COVID card in my bag over there. Back in March of this year. And I took George with me because, you know, I don't like needles. And I was scared because, especially, it was so far. Yeah. And I didn't know if I was going to have like a reaction after I got the shot. And dry, you know, getting in the car. I don't want to get behind the wheel. Your cell phone. Yeah, I don't want to get behind the wheel. So I took George with me, and I felt fine. And I, you know, I literally got no reaction at all from the Johnson and Johnson. Now I know that you have been on the. It, 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 well, I remember at first you were like, "No, I'm not getting a COVID shot." And then now you you, you were on the fence for a little while. I've, I've been you on the fence for right, some you, time. You've been on the fence. <laughs> And I have not pressured you. Nobody has pressured you at all. Nobody has talked down to you about it because everybody has different beliefs on whether it's religious or personal. And you came in this morning and you shared something with me about um, that the reason that you didn't want to get it because it was personal and you had your, your reasons, which, you know, that's your reasons. Those are your personal reasons and nobody needs to know that. And now you have you you gave me the shocking news this morning, and I was yeah. just like, "Wow!" I've been uh, kind of just paying attention to my mm-hmm. own news this week and mm-hmm. the news stories, mm-hmm. particularly that lady on Monday that was right. saying at one of the hospitals that right. a lot of the patients come in have their head down low, and yeah. a lot of them uh, that are really sick are the unvaccinated ones, right. saying, "I wish I would have gotten vaccinated." Yeah, the majority of the people that are going into 
the hospital now are unvaccinated people is what they're saying. Yeah. And so I think what's changed my mind pretty uh-huh. much is I kind of fall into that line of the people right. that have been right. going into the hospitals right. and being sick. Plus, on top of it, with the line of work you're in, I mean, you and I are in a safe environment here. Um, you know, you're on your side. I'm on my side. You know that I'm vaccinated. And we don't wear a mask. But now at your at your job, at your other job, when you're are, uh, massaging, do you wear a mask when you massage, just out of curiosity? We, uh, the mask, the mandatory masking has been it's brought been lifted. off. Okay, lifted. so it's not yeah. required. Okay. Now, do your your um, clients on the table, do they wear a mask? You know, some some do. Okay. I've, some, okay. some fail off for a while, but mm-hmm. lately mm-hmm. I've been seeing more. Uh, okay. particularly okay. new people coming back right. that are, do come in with a mask. Right, right. And then we tell them that they don't have to wear the mask. Right. They can if they want. Right. And where we work as employees, we have the option of okay. either wearing or not wearing. I'm seeing more of my fellow employees mask up. Yeah. Well, with the variant and, and stuff like that. common sense. And what, what we have to be careful of, too, is we can't ask the... Um, the customer that lays on your table, have you had your COVID shot because of your getting into their, their personal privacy, so to speak? Yeah, you don't want to do it that, be, yeah, It sure. wouldn't be, it wouldn't they be can, proper. they can turn around and ask yeah. you, have of course, you gotten your COVID of course, shot? Of course, of yeah. course. Um, and now you're going to have that extra shield, so to speak, yeah. when you're working with your clients on your tables, and especially clients you don't know, that are strangers coming in for the first time. Yeah, it's so it'll just, give you a more comfort level. And now. I think something else that made me change my mind is mm-hmm. this: uh, the Delta variant seems yeah. a little bit too much mm-hmm. more contagious seeming. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't have my facts straight. Right. I don't know if it's just me thinking that way. Mm-hmm. But when the COVID nineteen first came out, I thought of, I thought of like. Uh, old people catching this yeah. illness and maybe how important and it was no you were right elderly you were right it was a, should, the, the the numbers originally were for the older folks um catching covid 19 those yeah. were the proven numbers and then all of a sudden as this thing went by for months and months now the num the age number started decreasing and decreasing and decreasing they did their research, and then they found that, like, any age yeah. can catch this thing. I just have a funny feeling that those people more in my group are probably catching this more, mm-hmm. and I can't be like – I can't feel like I'm so big and mighty and powerful and mm-hmm. could fight something if I caught it mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. I'll mm-hmm. never catch it. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't be feeling like it anymore because it seems like I've slipped into that zone of, of the people that – that are going into the mm-hmm, hospitals mm-hmm, mm-hmm, with with the variant, mm-hmm. and I'm scared. I'm 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 actually for the first time for for the first time during all of this, mm-hmm. I've been a little nervous. Okay, that's all yeah. right. That's okay. There, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I was, um, I was freaked out from day one. Yes, you were. Like I I was literally. <laughs> you were. <laughs> you remember? I I, I was. Freaked out a year and a half ago. I had to hold your hand in here, it but was, I, of course I couldn't hold your yeah, hand because that's I, contagious. I, I was I was freaked out. <laughs> I didn't want nobody in here except you, of course, unless they had a mask on. The other shows, yeah. like when Pat Sacco was doing his show, I'm like, you got to wear a mask, Pat. You know, and and everybody else. But people, you, it shows that we're all individuals, I guess, Evan, yeah, and t- yeah. people take things yeah. differently. Yeah, definitely. And we got to respect one another at the time level involved and yeah. how people are taking it and mm-hmm. handling it because people are different. Yeah, and the new variant, from what they say, the different um, signs and, and things that are going like it gives you the stomach cramps, it gives you the diarrhea, it gives you a fever. Um, and some other things. It's almost like it's a stomach flu. Is it's is all the different like things? It. it sounds like it's a um, yeah. a heavy duty stomach flu. Is what it is. And then, so, if you ever think back to the last time you had the flu, mm-hmm. like, I don't even want to think about that. I one. mean, I remember just how bad it was. Mm-hmm. And when you get to that moment, when I've gotten so sick before, I will be like. I'll pray to God and I'll say, oh, help me, God, please help me through this. I will never complain about 
anything so trivial or mm-hmm. anything ever again. I'll mm-hmm. be so thankful. Right, right, you, right. You just feel so desperate when you get there, and and, right. I, and I don't want to get there. So I you're going to feel. I think um, I'm going to get vaccinated. You're you're going to feel. Uh, I will tell you this much: you're going to feel a huge um, sense of relief, a huge sigh of relief after you get your first vaccination, because. It'll be like, wow, I'm protected now. But I will say this: don't. Even though you get your shot, don't let your guard down. You're right. Don't because a lot of people are doing that, and there's yeah. this big misconception that, oh my gosh, okay, now like you just said, um, <laughs> you know, you you had the, um, I, I think you said, quote me if I'm wrong okay. about, you had the. Um, Oh, high and mighty that I did. You were invincible, kind of invincible I don't about get it. Because I remember you because said you had said age, to me, "I run, I yeah. feel healthy." Right. Oh my gosh, and, I'm not going to. Right, get and this. I remember you had told me quite a number. And if of I times, do, I can fight it. You told me a number of times. I never get sick. I never get this. I never get that. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So now, and and thank God, you you haven't gotten sick, but now you're going to add that extra layer that that shield like your home appliance policy that you have yeah right kind of kind of compare it to that you pay that monthly fee Mm -hmm. so your appliances are covered so now you're getting that shot and now you're gonna be like now your body's insured and then evan you're right it it is insurance because i'm thinking about the people Mm -hmm. that are in the hospital stays yeah and then i'm thinking how long and mm-hmm. how would I be able to afford that hospital stay? Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. That's, for people that don't have health insurance. Or, yeah, for people that don't. As and well. Even the people that do, you know, it's a uh, time out, sickness from work. Yeah, you're, you lose you're money. You're down and out. Yeah. Loss of funds and things like that. Yeah. But keep in mind, like I said, even though you're getting the shot, and, and this is my attitude and people don't understand it, even though you're getting the shot, you can still catch COVID. Yes. You can still catch COVID-19. Absolutely. But here's the but. The big but is it will the shot will prevent you from getting deathly ill, going in the hospital and or passing away. So it will help fend it off. So you'll have antibodies. And those are three pretty important yeah, factors there that so. you just mentioned, definitely, Evan. <laughs> um, definitely yeah. so. But I'm proud of you for, for oh, coming forward and saying that. I think that's awesome. And <laughs> I will support you in any decision that you make. I think that's awesome you're moving forward with the whole thing. Yeah, and I'm I'm still in line with people that leave it be a personal decision. Yeah, and I'm, it is. I just have come to that, and that's my own. So yeah, we'll and, and that's it. Take that's it from it. there. And if you go... You know, when you go tomorrow and if you get down there and you decide that, you know, at the last moment you you <laughs> bang a U-turn a <laughs> and run out the door, you know what? That's your personal decision. How hard does it, how bad does it hurt that deltoid? Honestly, it doesn't, Bonnie. No, it really just doesn't. Just a little. If I can pinch your arm yeah. and you can deal with a pinch, honestly, <laughs> it's really not that bad. And I'm a away. wuss. I am a wuss when it comes to needles. Yeah. I am the worst <laughs> when it comes to needles. And if I could deal with it. You can deal with me it. Me too. I'll you just can. have them blindfold me, or no. I'll look away. You know what you do? You just you just just sit there. You just sit there. They're they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna pinch a. Uh, they're gonna kind of go like that just a little bit. Yeah. They're gonna jab you. They're gonna put it in, and boom, it's done. It's like two seconds. It's honestly, it's two seconds. Okay. It's it's so quick. Um, you won't. You may not even feel it. Honestly, you'll be fine. And if you want me to meet you down there, I'll meet you down there and hold your oh, hand. Oh, that's terrific. Okay, that, I'll meet you that's... down there and hold your hand. If Gary <laughs> okay. won't go with you, I'll go with you, okay? Now, is has Gary decided what he's going to do? He's deciding. He's leaning my way, too. Okay, yeah. okay. And he'll make that decision when he's ready. Absolutely. You know, let him, if, if he wants to go with you. <laughs> um, you guys can go together as a couple yep. and get it together. Yep. And and do your I think thing. the hardest thing will be the two minute ride there. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, just, it won't take me long to get there, but the ride will seem long. <laughs> I know it'll seem like eternity, definitely. <laughs> All right, it's six twenty two on the Get Up and Go Show. It's the Friday edition. It's time for news. All brought to you by Florida Blue, your local Blue Cross Blue Shield. Helping families take control of their health for more than 75 years. Bonnie's at the news desk with a headline. Take it away, Bonnie. Thank you, Evan. Florida is reporting 20,133 new COVID-19 cases. The figure is from the Centers for Disease Control and is the second highest number of daily cases since the pandemic began. The state also added 84 new virus-related deaths. 
Non-emergent surgeries and procedures at the three Cleveland Clinic hospitals in Martin and St. Lucie counties will be postponed starting Monday following steps taken last week at the Cleveland Clinic Hospital in Indian River County, a top official said Thursday. The move comes as COVID-positive patients in the facilities increase. There were nearly 195 COVID-positive patients hospitalized in the four Cleveland Clinic hospitals across the Treasure Coast, including two hospitals in Martin and one hospital each in St. Lucie and Indian River counties, according to Dr. Richard Rothman, Institute Chair for Hospital Medicine for the Cleveland Clinic Florida region. That's a quadruple fold increase from the 45 hospitalized patients on July 2nd. The 195 patients also is an uptick from the 179 hospitalized COVID positive patients on Monday at the four Cleveland Clinic Treasure Coast Hospitals. The feud between the White House and Governor Ron DeSantis goes on. During a White House briefing, Press Secretary Jen Psaki noted that COVID is surging in Florida. The governor has taken steps that are counter counter to public health recommendations. The city of Port St. Lucie announced Thursday that Amazon will be building a 1 million square foot fulfillment center near I-95 and Midway Road. WPTV's Derek Lowe with the story. Once completed, the new Amazon Fulfillment Center will be the largest building in all of Port St. Lucie. It's going to be huge, a million square feet of fulfillment center. Located on the southeast corner of Midway Road and I-95. It's just really exciting to know that they're going to be able to provide over 500 jobs. Amazon is now the third distribution center planning to come to Port St. Lucie. Over $100 million of investment in our local economy. Recently, FedEx and Cheney Brothers also announced plans to join the city. Together, the three employers will create over 1,000 jobs, making Port St. Lucie a place to live and work. It's really exciting. I'm so thrilled for all of us here in Port St. Lucie. The new site will house 98 loading bays for trucks. The city's vice mayor says prior traffic concerns have been considered and corrected. I think through the planning process, they are they have resolved that issue with regard to turn lanes. Amazon starting salaries begin at $15 per hour. City officials say that construction will be complete by either late summer or fall of 2022. Reporting in Port St. Lucie, I'm Derek Lowe, WPTV News Channel 5. Going to the grocery store or the mall, the city recommends you mask up. Going to City Hall, the city requires you to. The City Commission Thursday approved a mask requirement for city buildings, regardless of vaccination status, and recommended people wear masks indoors while in public places. The new policies passed during a special meeting that was called last minute in response to the recent surge in COVID-19 cases locally and statewide. It was the first meeting in months where all commissioners wore masks and chairs in the meeting chambers were socially distanced, a signal of health officials backtracking on their previous calls to loosen precautionary measures for the vaccinated. The commission gave city manager David Diaz the flexibility to withdraw or reenact the mask requirement and recommendation as needed. Governor Ron DeSantis in May signed an executive order restricting local governments from placing mask mandates on private businesses. Next year, Florida communities could start seeing some of the dollars from a large settlement against pharmaceutical companies blamed for fueling the opioid pandemic. Here's WPTV's Megan McRoberts. We're definitely ready to get it. A survivor and now an advocate for opioid abuse, John Nelson is closely watching the settlement agreements being made by big pharma companies blamed for feeding the opioid crisis. We're going to look into it. He's hopeful he might be able to see some of that settlement money trickling down to the states to support his nonprofit, FamiliesRecover.org. Is it going to make a difference? depends on how they divvy it up. Cities and counties across Florida with the Florida Attorney General's office have spent more than a year pulling together a mutual agreement that says where the money will go once settlements start getting paid out, expected by late 2022. We represent a few dozen cities and counties around the state. Attorney Eric Romano represents Fort Pierce and St. Lucie County. Particularly South Florida has seemed to be kind of the epicenter. 
of the opioid epidemic. That's why Romano says Florida will stand to gain about 7% of the settlement dollars going to all 50 states and thousands of local communities. So far, a $26 billion settlement has been reached with more than $1.3 billion of that headed to Florida. This mutual agreement will break out payments to the counties, state, and cities over 18 years. One of the concerns that everybody involved had was making sure that governments don't take money from the opioid settlement and use it for other projects. Romano says that's why this agreement also lays out how the money can be used, including supporting treatment options, giving to community groups, education, and connecting people with resources. Personally, I think it should go to victims, advocates. Nelson feels the settlement is a drop in the bucket for the pain caused by the opioid distributors, but hopes it can make some impact on curbing the epidemic. Still rampant. It's full blown. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. Lastly, a guy in a wheelchair fell on the tracks at a subway station in New York on Wednesday, but a random man jumped down and saved him right before that next train came barreling in. Other people on the platform helped pull them back up. April Ross and Alex Kleinman won the gold in women's beach volleyball. April now has a beach volleyball medal in every color. Silver from London, bronze from Rio de Janeiro, gold at the Tokyo Games. And it was her partner Alex's first Olympics, first gold too. Our news time is 629. We'll have weather and traffic together next. insurance or want to switch plans, you can sign up for a new Florida Blue Health plan or switch to a better one for as little as $0 per month if you qualify. Call us today, 772-621-8830 or visit floridablue.com slash centers to learn more. To be eligible for zero monthly cost, your marketplace monthly advance premium tax credit must equal to or be more than the premium. Policies have limitations and exclusions. Benefits available in certain plans and counties. Florida Blue and Florida Blue HMO are independent licensees of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. 629 on the Get Up and Go show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for traffic and weather together. Bonnie? Well, Evan, we're not finding any accidents on a Friday morning here. We have a nice uh, roadway. Roads are fine if you're heading off to work. US 1, major highways included, they're good. There's your latest look at traffic. Partly cloudy sky in Port St. Lucie at 73 in Newburgh, New York. It's 62. Here's our weather at WPTV. Your WPTV first alert forecast calls for temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s with a few showers towards the coast and a couple of spotty downpours for the morning commute. This afternoon, highs in the low 90s with feels like temperatures in the triple digits. We'll see partly sunny skies throughout the day with a 50% chance for showers and storms, mainly towards the lake. Tomorrow morning, coastal rainfall followed by a 60% chance for afternoon inland showers and storms with highs in the low 90s. Sunday, hot and humid weather continues. Highs in the low 90s, some morning showers, then everything moves west throughout the day. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall on WSTUAM 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. Denny Artachi, host of the Today with Denny show, where we talk about financial and healthy well-being from a common sense perspective. This is a show where we cover what's on your mind, like local, world, and entertainment news. So tune in, have fun, share your story Thursday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. on WSTU 1450 AM radio. Hello, this is Gary Owen of the Owen Insurance Group. We are a local independent insurance agency located right here on the Treasure Coast. I've been a resident here for 34 years and have helped thousands of clients with their insurance planning needs. We specialize in life, health, and Medicare insurance planning. Don't travel the road alone. Let us be your guide. We are the Owen Insurance Group. Contact us today at 772-210-1020 or visit our website at oweninsurancegroup.net. 
So, have you heard this one? A priest and a rabbi come into this radio station. <laughs> really, it's a priest and a rabbi. Right here, Friday mornings beginning at 9. Here on WSTU AM 1450. Bring your questions and join their lively conversation with Father Christian from St. Mary's Episcopal Church and Rabbi Matt Durbin from the Temple Beit Hayim. It's a priest and a rabbi. Friday mornings at 9 here on WSTU. Florida real estate is hotter than the weather. Now is a great time to find that dream home. I'm Eileen Simons, Realtor with EXP Realty. Join me for My Dream Home every Monday morning at 10 on WPSL and WSTU. We'll talk about real estate, answer your questions, interview guest experts, have featured listings, and a featured community each week. That's My Dream Home radio show, Mondays at 10 on WPSL and WSTU, or listen on on Alexa, Google Home, or on the TuneIn app. If you have a suggestion for the show, we would love to hear from you. Send us an email to WSTUMorningShow at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the Get Up and Go Show. Here's Evan and Bonnie. 633 on the Get Up and Go Show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for viral videos. <laughs> All right, so Bonnie, listen, when you go get your shot tomorrow, I'm going to come with a camera. I'm going to videotape it, and the video will make it viral. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're going to see I'm it just like teasing. a, a squ- squeamishing face. I'm just teasing. I'm just trying to make light of it to kind of, you know, chuckle around with you a little face bit. Face is going to look like a lemon because nah, I... Yeah, you're going to be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. I have all the faith in the world you're going to be fine. Anyway, I got a flashback video um, from uh, the TV show Shark Tank. Remember that one? Yes. Shark Tank still around. Uh-huh. Um, the entrepreneurs, right, with their... is Yeah, their inventions that they're uh, looking for money from the sharks to help yeah. their business launch. Well, here's a flashback from Shark Tank. It's a woman named Arena Block. She pitched a line of fashionable surgical masks. <laughs> I have to laugh at this because everybody and their mother since COVID has been... Making homemade masks and fashionable masks. Fashion statements. Right. With them. So she has the audacity to go in the shark tank and pitch <laughs> her, her fashionable masks to the sharks. Okay, here, listen to some of the audio. Base block is a collection of fashion surgical masks. <laughs> Taking oh something sterile here. and wow. uninteresting like, oh as a surgical wow. mask and infusing it with fun and creativity. I had close to a million hits on my website. But is that because swine flu? was all over the news for two weeks. Now we don't see it anymore. It's an epidemic that came and went. You need a new epidemic. It's just downright freaky. For that reason, I'm just out. I'm out. I'm out for the same reason. I'm out. You I'm hear out. they're all out. It's like that. Boom, they're all out. Oh, you, <laughs> They didn't want no, nothing to do with her. And you know what's really freaky about this is this came out long before yeah. COVID-19. This came or, out way before. This is like from 2009. And it's just now going viral. What really gives you the creeps in that is the yeah. guy, that shark guy in there says, we need a new epidemic for this yeah like yeah. he was almost predicting the future or something. yeah exactly and they were kind of knocking on her about this idea yeah. of uh this lady could make tons yeah i mean if she saved her idea and she did it now for the yeah. pandemic i bet she made tons of money yep for sure i remember the fashionable masks that the ladies were wearing around mm-hmm. christmas time mm-hmm. last year mm-hmm. i saw my sister-in-law out on the store out in the store I've seen people with like little bells hanging off of them, and the I had one that like I saw one lady at Christmas time. She had like lights flashing on them. Yes. She put like a whole battery pack in there. It was like <laughs> flashing everywhere. <laughs> she was, was like a Christmas tree. She was like a walking around. Christmas tree. It was really cool. But it was fashionable. Mm-hmm. Like my sister in law was like in this really pretty black dress, mm-hmm. and because she really dresses up really fantastic, mm-hmm. she has fashion about her. And then the mask was one of those black sequined ones mm. that matched the dress, you know, and. Um, I just remember the ladies matching up so well. Not me, though. I'd be walking out in my T-shirt and my jeans. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Having my little, uh, oh, I had like one of those little uh, doggy Christmas masks with uh, oh, okay. Christmas dogs and Christmas kitties on okay. it. Okay, okay. So um, here's another viral video. Well, I don't have the video because it's got F-bombs in it, so I have the audio, the edited version. Mm-hmm. It, there's a family that has a tradition of what's called cake flipping, where they toss a cake into the air so that it flips over and then they catch it upright. Oh. They've been doing this for like years. They must be good at it then. They, they've been doing it for years. Listen in. 
started a few years ago. It was a couple of cousins, a couple of beers, and a dare, and we made it happen. Now every time my family has something to celebrate, we make sure that we flip our cake. We usually have about three cakes, and we always make sure that we flip one. Do they always have three cakes, so it just yeah. in case um, yep. the one flips out yep. and all over the floor it yep, splatters sure do sure do every single year they do this thing it's kind of like there should be a, a um a tv series kind of like you know there they have flipped sh- that house there should be flip that cake flip the cake flip that cake <laughs> um here's something uh, pretty interesting bonnie i'm going to play a sound to you okay it, and it's it's um a sound of a dog howling but what it is it's there's four different howling sounds mm-hmm. and one of the four is the dog so oh. I want you to tell me whether it's number one, number two, number three, or the last one. Who are the others? Like a wolf. The others and are like human Bigfoot beings. And the others oh, are human beings. Human These being. are real <laughs> okay. people. Real people. Human beings in the mist. Right. I'm going to play the audio first, and then after you guess, I'll play the video so you can see which one it is. All okay. Right. All right. Here we go. Okay, so which one of those four did you think was the dog? That first one was a human. The first one? Okay, so here's the video clip. <laughs> Look Wait, at that kid. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is the dog. The last one is the dog. The last one is the dog. <laughs> That is so cute. It looks like he's a big kid, and then he has his smaller brothers, uh-huh. and then the dog. <laughs> when I saw that this morning, I was like, oh, man, that's, like, adorable. It is. I was like, man, it's like they, they really sound like they're a bunch of animals. And that dog likes to chime right in with them, getting right. all oh! excited. <laughs> I can't even get up that high. My gosh. I, no, that was actually pretty good. No, I can't even get up that high. My gosh. There's, like, a little midget under my chair grabbing my booty or something like that. <laughs> I had a cat that used to sound like a dog. Really? Um, my cat Jeremiah grew up with Rottweilers. Wow! So he would um, he had a little meow that was kind of a cross between a meow and a bark. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. Um, I have a list here, Bonnie, of the top ten things that drive a sane person absolutely insane. <laughs> drive a sane person absolutely insane. Are these like little things that occur, or are major things that will? Um, no, blow not, your, well, blow I don't know you if, away. I don't know if they're major or if they're litter little things. I'll let you. I'll let you decide they what they are. Go back and yeah, forth. they kind of go back and forth. But it's the top ten things that drive a sane person actually so mad it makes them insane. <laughs> okay, now number ten. I have a. This is my pet peeve, and this is great for number ten. The radio station does not tell you who sang the song. Right? right? That bothers you? That bothers me. When I'm yeah. listening to the radio, you know how when we used to be in music radio, they always taught us to back sell what you played. Give that name the artist. Give the name and the artist. Title. You know, you know that's the latest from Michael Jackson and <laughs> Billie Jean. Before that, we heard from. And prior to that, we also listened to Boom. 635 right now. And coming up next hour, we're going to hear from Boom, 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 and Boom. So you you yeah. know how they taught that to us in radio, back selling billboard. Actually, that at my XM has been doing that to me lately, but mm-hmm. it hasn't been driving me like completely mm-hmm. insane. My radio will give the yeah, name it'll of show the you song, right? But, it'll but, show you, but it doesn't give me the artist. Okay. So so many times I'll be traveling. Okay, I know the name of the song. Yeah. All right, who's singing it? Yep. And I don't know if it's something on my radio that I'm not plugging in right. Mm-hmm. Where it could give me the name and artist, right. but it's only giving me the name. It might recently. just be a setting in your radio. Yeah, but that drives me batty if I'm listening to a radio station <laughs> and they don't give me the name of the song or who yeah. sang it. That drives me nuts. But the nice thing about now is you can always Google it. You can well, look you Shazam it. Up it. They have a they have a so music instantly. app called Shazam. Yeah, where. You open up Shazam and you press a button, and within three seconds, Shazam will tell you the name of the song and the artist. Yeah, there it just is. Like, <laughs> just like that. Just like that. Coming in at number nine, you have to inform five different salespeople in the same store that you're just browsing. Okay? I hate that when I go to a oh. store and I will get bombarded, or even worse, 
yeah. car lot. A car lot is they are they are <laughs> notorious for stuff like that. You go to a car lot and yeah. you get like it, it's like um it's like you're a glob of honey and the bees are swarming to you and they yeah. just want to they just it used oh. it used to be like that but mm-hmm. um I think the experience when I went out last it's probably because of their trying to get better about it now yeah. at car dealerships yeah. to respect maybe one another's mm-hmm. territory or mm-hmm. they have more of a plan yeah. instead of swarming all on mm-hmm. you at once, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's changed a little yeah, bit. You, you go to these um, these uh, higher-end stores like Macy's, Neiman Marcus, or, or stuff like that, and you're you're looking around and you'll get like these salespeople come up. Can I help you with anything? Five oh, seconds yeah. later, another person. But, man, you go into Walmart – and forget it. You can't even find an associate to help you and anywhere. And that's when you need an associate. And I needed somebody yesterday. <laughs> I went to Walmart yesterday, yes. and I needed to buy a box to ship something. And there were no boxes to buy, and I'm looking for an associate. And I must have went up and down 10 aisles, and I right. couldn't find nobody to help me. It's always when you need to find them that you're not Oh, it's awful. But then when you just want to browse and look by yourself, like you mm-hmm. said, Evan, they're all over you. Oh, forget it. And I get nervous about it. I think that that associate might be following me, think I'm going to steal something or mm-hmm. some sort of thing, like they don't trust me or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, mm-hmm. I just want to look. Here's another one. Um, you know the tire gauge you use to check the air in your tires? Yeah. Well, your tire gauge lets out half the air while you're trying to get a reading oh. because you don't, like, put it on just right, wow. and you're struggling and struggling, and by the time you get it on right, you've left half the air out of your tire already. Now, that would drive me a little nuts. Yeah. Maybe not completely insane, mm-hmm. but I'm almost there. Ooh, I because... just got the EBGBs thinking of this next one. Okay. I, I just got the chills, <laughs> and it's going to make you go that way, too. You slice your tongue while licking an envelope. Uh, Oh, see, did that just give you chills? Yeah, it brought water to my eyes. Right? Yeah. Right? And I've done that. (laughs) I have done that. You go to lick an envelope. Yes. I don't do that no more. I don't lick an envelope. I will, um, like, get a little sponge and wet it down or... Or if I don't want to do that, I'll just get scotch tape and tape the damn thing. Yeah, shut. I always think I'm going to get poisoned or something from that. I um, know, right? What from the substance the glue. that's on the envelope? The glue that's on there. Yeah, I don't like that. All right, coming at number five, you drink from a soda can into which someone has extinguished a cigarette. Oh, now that's disgusting, and I I hate when people do that. They take this cigarette butt oh. and they put it inside a soda can, and you don't realize it. I've seen somebody do that before. I've never done that. Oh, that's I've never uh, drank out of a soda can by oh. mistake where there was somebody's oh. cigarette butt oh, that's, in that. That's just gross. I can't imagine that. I've seen that happen to somebody. Oh, before. that is that's just yeah. utterly disgusting. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, number four um, uh, on the list. There's always a car riding your tail when you're slowing down to find an address. Yeah, that bothers so me. You're some. driving down a street and you're you don't have a GPS. So you're looking for the address, and you slow down so you don't go by the house, and there's this car that's so close that if you hit your brakes, they're going to kiss your behind. Yeah, that's why when I'm following somebody that's like that in yeah. a residential or, or businesses or anywhere, if mm-hmm. they are they seem to be looking, I tend to back off mm-hmm. because I know how it is when they do that mm-hmm. to me and that sort of thing. Coming in, be at, patient. coming in at number three, here's a good one, and I'm guilty of this, and I'll tell you why. The elevator stops on every single floor, and nobody gets on the darn thing. <laughs> nobody gets on that. Yeah. I have gone, and I'm guilty of this. If I go to like a high-rise or, or an office building that's got a lot of floors, I, I, I'm such a prankster. I will press every button in the elevator and really? then get off. Oh yes, in a heartbeat. That in might, a heartbeat. That could be. That could coincide with uh, traveling to work in the morning and hitting every red stoplight. Yes, uh, exactly. Being stopped a million times. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, coming in at number two, the person behind you in the supermarket runs his cart into the back of your ankle. <laughs> I have had that happen more times than one, and that just really ticks me off yeah. when somebody does that. It kind of hurts. It kind of It does. Too. It does. And it's especially startling. now with when um, <laughs> with COVID going on and how Publix had the little lines on the ground. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I was so anal about those lines. If somebody crossed that line into my personal space, uh-huh. I let them know it. 
I, I, I let them know. I say, excuse me, can you please stay six feet back? That's why the lines are on the floor. Please stay socially distant. And they'll say, well, I have a mask on. I'm like, I don't care if you have a mask on. Yeah. Respect my privacy. I don't get completely OCD about it. Yeah. Maybe I should. But when I'm lately, too, if I see the lines and I see someone standing in the middle of my line and the next line mm-hmm. or not doing it right, mm-hmm. I'm like wondering why, like. Oh, good gosh. Don't you see it? Yeah. Don't you see the line exactly. and know what to do? <laughs> exactly. Last one real quick so we got to get to news. Last one is you have to try on a pair of sunglasses with that stupid little elastic thing right smack dab in the middle. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. that's another thing that really is um is, is kind of <laughs> aggravating when you go to do stuff like that. Or trying something on in the buying new clothes in the dressing room and they have that kind of like oh the uh, security tag that that's you ever ever done that you've gone and tried on something and that security tag is there i have a pair of shoes that i bought from uh plato's closet Mm -hmm. a long time ago you know those shoes are still in my closet with the security tag on it oh my gosh because i purchased them and forgot just forgot to have them taken don't try to 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 wedge it off because inside there is ink Oh, is there? Yes, it's like when you go, when you rob a bank, they put a dye pack in there. Yeah. Well, there's ink inside of there, so it'll just, like, explode. Thanks for the fair yeah. warning. <laughs> 648 right now, a little behind on news, but that's all right. It's all brought to you this segment by St. Lucie Jewelry and Coin. For the best deals in town, go see Hawk Levy at St. Lucie Jewelry and Coin. Here's Bonnie. Thank you, Evan. Governor Ron DeSantis believes the state law he signed banning mask mandates will stand up in court. Speaking at Tampa General Hospital, he answered questions about a potential suit in the Tampa Bay area. It's our belief that that this should be a parent's choice. I think it flows directly from that bill, and I think we'll end up winning. The suit claims the no-mask mandate law violates local control of schools under the state constitution. Martin County School District hires more nurses. WPTV's Todd Wilson was on hand for the emergency meeting last night and has this. Lazy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. It's an emergency meeting with the Martin County School District. They just approved to move to hire additional nurses for the coming school year. I'm always open to hearing recommendations from our staff and from the superintendent moving forward. Superintendent John Malay says the district is working with the local Department of Health on issues of contact tracing and quarantining. Working with the local DOH will require the district to hire five additional nurses for eight weeks and one additional registered nurse for eight months of work. Each high school will have an additional RN. They will share one RN. So, and the, all of them could help each other, but one will service the middle schools. And then at the elementary level, we'll also have one RN overseeing the COVID operations. The contracted nurses will work for four and a half days during the week and a half day on Sunday. Malay says these nurses are temporary. They're waiting to find out if they've been awarded grant money to take things to the next level. That would put an additional nurse at every school. So we thought this is a good measure that in the interim period, the next eight weeks, until we find out about that extra grant, that we can still provide the services that we need. Malay says they should find out by August 15th if the district has been awarded the grant money. He says the nurses will be assigned before the new school year begins on August 11th at a cost of just over $200,000. In Martin County, Todd Wilson, WPTV News Channel 5. The Coast Guard and law enforcement looked offshore and on beaches between Wabasso and Sebastian in the second full day of a search for missing 42-year-old kayaker Donald Waters. So far, nothing has been found since his inflatable boat was pulled from the ocean by fishermen south of the Sebastian Inlet Tuesday evening. The U.S. Coast Guard, Indian River County Sheriff's Office, and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission were all involved in the second day of the search. Everything is essentially the same, said Coast Guard Petty Officer 3rd Class Ryan Estrada around 5 p.m. Thursday. No changes. We still have surface and air assets out there. Norwegian Cruise Line in Florida are playing tug-of-war over which court should hear a challenge to the state's ban on so-called vaccine passports. 
Governor DeSantis wants the case moved to Tampa. Norwegian wants the case heard where it's headquartered in Miami. Today, a judge is hearing arguments in Norwegian's request for a preliminary injunction against the vaccine passport ban, which would prevent the cruise line from requiring customers to show shot status. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz says DeSantis has no right to stop a private business from getting this information. It's outrageous that the governor is trying to stop an industry like that is as important to Florida's economy as the cruise line industry who want to require vaccines. No word yet on when a ruling could come. Wendy Grossman, Miami. In Miami, the Coast Guard is announcing what it believes is the largest illegal drug bust in its history. The seizures made in the Eastern Pacific and Caribbean Sea amount to more than $1.4 billion worth of cocaine and marijuana. Florida utility customers are being warned of a scam. They are getting calls from people claiming to be energy company employees who threaten to shut off service if money isn't paid within minutes. Duke Energy says it heard of over 900 such calls last month alone, and its customers were scammed out of over $14,000. And lastly, an Orlando theme park is now under new ownership. Advent Health has purchased the Holy Land Experience for $32 million with plans to develop the property into a health care complex. The Hall of Fame game featured the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Cowboys took the early lead 3 to nothing. But that was not for long as Pittsburgh came storming back with 16 unanswered points to defeat the Cowboys 16-3 to in the first preseason game of the year. News time is 6.53 with weather and traffic together next. The first time I stepped into St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, I figured it would just be one of my many stops on my road to the perfect engagement ring. My fiancé means the world to me, so I wanted something extra special. I found a huge selection of engagement rings at great prices, and my worry about finding the perfect engagement ring was quickly replaced with exceptional customer service. St. Lucie Jewelry's over 400 five-star reviews really told the story. I finally picked a ring, and it was perfect. She was floored, and then the tears came. Hi. This is Hawk Levy, owner of St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins. We're now celebrating 26 years. Voted best diamond dealers, best jewelry buyers, and best jeweler year after year. Come celebrate with us in opening our third location at 1335 St. Lucie West Boulevard. We invite you to take a tour of our competition, but then come see us last. Six fifty four right now in the Get Up and Go show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for traffic and weather together. Bonnie, we have an accident that happened just minutes ago. This is in Martin County on I ninety five southbound in Hope Sound at mile marker ninety eight. This is southbound and no lanes are blocked at the moment from that accident. If you see something, say something. Always call us two two zero ninety seven eighty eight two two zero WSTU. Stewart right now is at 76, and in Victoria, British Columbia, it's 67. Here's our weather for the weekend. WPTV. Your WPTV first alert forecast calls for temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s with a few showers towards the coast and a couple of spotty downpours for the morning commute. This afternoon, highs in the low 90s with feels like temperatures in the triple digits. We'll see partly sunny skies throughout the day with a 50% chance for showers and storms, mainly towards the lake. Tomorrow, morning coastal rainfall followed by a 60% chance for afternoon inland showers and storms with highs in the low 90s. Sunday, hot and humid weather continues. Highs in the low 90s, some morning showers, then everything moves west throughout the day. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall on WSTUAM 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. Mark Brechtel, certified public accountants, are proud to sponsor Treasure Coast Solutions, a community service program designed to provide information you can use, a local perspective on national issues, local solutions to meet your individual concerns. At our firm, we believe that information is knowledge, and with knowledge comes the power to have a positive impact on our lives, businesses, 
schools, and community. If you would like one of our professionals to address your personal financial or business concerns, please give us a call to set up an appointment at 220-3380. No hype, just facts. I'm Casey, and I invite you to tune into the Casey Ingram Show at my new time, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Hear from community leaders, learn about some of our great nonprofit organizations, get the latest updates from our elected officials, and meet the candidates. Even rock and roll legends have joined the show from time to time. I'm conservative but not divisive, bringing you the talk of the community. It is a fun and interesting hour beginning at 10 a.m. every Wednesday on WSTU AM 1450 and Facebook Live at the Casey Ingram Show. So, have you heard this one? A priest and a rabbi come into this radio station. <laughs> really, it's a priest and a rabbi. Right here, Friday mornings beginning at 9. Here on WSTU AM 1450. Bring your questions and join their lively conversation with Father Christian from St. Mary's Episcopal Church and Rabbi Matt Durbin from the Temple Beit Hayim. It's a priest and a rabbi. Friday mornings at 9 here on WSTU. The things you can do now to get a head start on the fall garden. That's coming up on This Land of Ours. You're going to need me. You're going to need us. All of us. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food. You're going to need our determination, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Today... 4-H is growing the next generation of leaders. Support us at 4-H.org. It's a new day. Thanks to the Farm Bill, USDA's conservation programs encourage, even reward, farmers who are willing to make a commitment to conservation. There are voluntary programs which provide technical assistance, cost share, land rental, and incentive payments. Conservation, there's something in it for you. Call or visit your local USDA service center. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Conservation Service. With another month of hot temps upon us, there's still much work to do in the garden, including getting it ready for fall crops. Take some time to remove spent vegetables, such as summer squash and bean plants. Pull tomato plants that are done bearing and showing signs of late blight. No need to use them for compost. Destroy them. Gather fallen fruit from trees. This limits disease spread and keeps wasps to a minimum. Analyze the garden for bare spots or areas in need of additions and look for good garden performers for fall planting. Now is the right time to sow cool weather crops such as cabbages, lettuces, broccoli, Swiss char, kale, beets, and radishes. For specks of color, plant some fall annual blooming mumps. In areas with a longer growing season, plant seeds of sunflowers, zinnias, cosmos, and marigolds. Touch up the tropical hibiscus by doing a little pruning before bringing them in for the winter. I'm Kathy Isom, Southeast Agnet. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jupiter, and Indian Town, Martin County's Heritage Station. Assassination in Afghanistan. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. Yet another Taliban attack amid a U.S. troop withdrawal. It'll be complete this month. Fox's Simon Owen details what happened live. Dave, the Taliban says its fighters have shot and killed the head of the Afghan government's press operations. An Afghan official says Dawa Khan Menapal was attacked in the capital, Kabul, during Friday prayers. It's the latest in a series of killings by the militant group targeting the government, which is backed by the U.S. The Taliban has intensified attacks as American and NATO forces withdraw from Afghanistan. Dave? Simon, for the third time in four days, the number of new COVID cases reported in the U.S. yesterday topped 100,000, which hasn't happened since February. A third of recent infections are in Texas and Florida. California is going to require all health care and long-term workers be vaccinated by September 30th. We support these vaccination requirements to protect workers, communities, and the country. We that is White House vaccination requirements to protect workers. White House Response Coordinator for COVID, Jeff Seins, says the rate of vaccinations has been on the rise. More than 68% of Americans 12 and older have had at least one dose. As a manhunt in Kentucky for whoever ambushed and killed a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy shot while working security off-duty at a car dealer, Democratic Congresswoman Cori Bush, who wants to defund police, is responding to critics to her spending $70,000 for her own private security, telling CBS... I have had attempts on 
my life. So suck it up and defunding the police has to happen. Missouri AG Eric Schmidt followed up saying, quote, St. Louis had a 50-year high in homicides last year. Cory Bush's comments are incredibly irresponsible. I can't stress enough how insulting it is to the families who have lost loved ones and kids to the rise of violent crime here in Missouri. Nice Missouri AG Eric Schmidt followed up saying, quote, America's listening to Fox News. Well, according to research, 82% of people remember radio ads. That means that 82% of you listening right now will remember that this is an ad for ZipRecruiter. If you're hiring, 82% of you will recall that ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster and easier. And 82% of you will note that you can try ZipRecruiter for free today. But you have to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Yes, free. 82% of you will keep in mind that ZipRecruiter's technology finds qualified people for your job and actively invites them to apply. Go! Is that you? Who are you talking to? Uh, 82% of you will also know that I, um, live with my mom. But the most important thing to note is that ZipRecruiter works. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Will you be part of the 82% who remember where you can try ZipRecruiter for free? It's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Again, that exclusive link is ZipRecruiter.com slash free. How much? Free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. The Senate worked late into last night trying to finalize that bipartisan infrastructure bill, setting a vote tomorrow to end debate. There's a new bill related to 9-11 nearly 20 years later. The bipartisan group of senators say it's time for the U.S. government to declassify documents believed to link Saudi Arabia to some of the hijackers. I want to know that. Because in terms of foreign policy, I want to know what I'm dealing with in a country. New Jersey Democrat Bob Menendez, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, introduced the September 11th Transparency Act with support of Majority Leader, New York Democrat Chuck Schumer. But we've learned in history when you hide secrets, they occur again and again and again. Previous administrations have cited national security concerns for not declassifying the documents. On Capitol Hill, Jared Halpern, Fox News. Next hour, we'll get the July employment report with the same number of jobs created as expected in June, around 850,000. But at the same time, economists say uncertainty from the Delta variant of COVID-19, continuing supply chain constraints, and a shortage of available workers could affect the outlook for the job market. Fox's Hillary Barsky. Stock futures are mixed the day after the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 hit record highs. You may have heard the story about a New Hampshire hermit jailed for refusing to leave his home on land he doesn't own. 81-year-old David Lidstone's remote small cabin near the Merrimack River burned down on Wednesday. Lidstone is known to locals as River Dave. He wasn't home at the time of the fire. Lidstone was jailed last month for contempt of court. The cabin was on land owned by a Vermont man who considers River Dave a squatter. Lidstone was told he'd be released if he agreed to leave the cabin. Lidstone told the judge, you came with your guns, you arrested me, brought me in here, you've got all my possessions, you keep them. I'll sit here with your you uniform on until I rot. There are now offers from as far away as California to help River Dave relocate. That's Tom Rigotti. I'm Dave Anthony. This is Fox News. Hi, this is Denny Artachi, host of the Today with Denny show, where we talk about financial and healthy well-being from a common sense perspective. This is a show where we cover what's on your mind, like local, world, and entertainment news. So tune in, have fun, share your story Thursday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. on WSTU 1450 AM radio. Taking your business to the next level requires money, and the Florida SBDC at Indian River State College has the expertise and connections to help you acquire your growth capital. Hi, I'm Michael Bernard, business consultant with the Florida SBDC at IRSC. We offer no-cost consulting and low-cost training to help you prepare and obtain financing. Whether you're looking for a traditional bank loan, government-backed loan, or a loan provided by an alternative lender, we have the tools, expertise, and resources to help you obtain the financing needed to succeed. While Florida SBDCs do not loan money or administer grants, our consultants maintain valuable relationships with local lenders and understand their lending requirements. Our certified business consultants, many of whom are former bankers and business owners, will provide confidential assistance to help guide you through the process of securing the right source of capital for your business. For one-on-one -on -one business consulting at no cost, contact the Florida SBDC at IRSC at 336-6285, online at irscbiz.com. Hi. 
I'm Eric Keen of CNW Technologies. When I'm asked if I know a local business that is good for this job or that service, I recommend a member of the Martin County Business Exchange. Local companies I count on for good service and fair prices. They're online at www.mcbiz.us. Local businesses you can count on for quality, service, and fair prices. McBiz.us, Martin County Business Exchange. It's just good business. Coming to you live from Stewart, Florida, the greatest little town in the world, it's the award-winning, critically acclaimed Get Up and Go Show on AM 1450 WSTU. You're invited to call the show anytime at 772-220-9788. And now, broadcasting live from their palatial studios, here are your hosts, Evan and Bonnie. Thank you very much, Madam Announcer. The date is August 6, 2021 on the Get Up and Go Show. Another break already? No, we're not taking a break. We have just begun. We, that's right. We have just begun. You're the most amazing guy. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Trump. I try to be. Oh, God, I'm bored already. How can you be bored with this show? We are Cutting Edge Entertainment. 7.08 is the official time on the program. Mr. Clock, would you certify that? It's now 7.08 a.m. 7.08 a.m. Bonnie, we are off and running at warp speed. I think we're going to break the sound barrier this morning. Yeah, I think so. I've, you know, we've been breaking it each and every week with the weeks going by oh so quickly right here. Mm-hmm. Every Time just, just flies uh, way too fast for it us. It flies by when you're having fun. Yeah, it does. That's Maybe sure. that's what it's either that you're uh, working way too much, uh, you know, doing several jobs like you do, Evan, mm-hmm. and you know me with my two or three jobs. Just the more you do, the more time flies by when you keep busy. That's right, for sure. Let's do some birthdays. News on the radio. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Today is August the sixth, twenty twenty one, and Bonnie, what do we have this morning? Daryl and Darren. I want to Double say, D. Yep. Happy, Double D. Happy birthday to the twins up north. Wow. Daryl and Darren. Can we say how old the, the uh, Double D twins are? I think they're uh, like a few years, I want to say, younger than me. Um, okay. I'm not sure how many years That younger. would be they're in their teens, their late teens, because <laughs> yeah. you're in your 20s. <laughs> that, yeah, they, they could be. Okay, they're very like good. They're like around 15 or 16, okay. I guess. Okay, very good. Very good. Well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to Double D, the Double D twins. You have the Doubleman twins, and now we have the Double D twins. And it was doubly said by Evan and I. Doubly said. I like that one. <laughs> Ty Simpkins is 20 years old today. That is the kid from Iron Man 3 and Jurassic World. Charlotte McKinney is 28 from a Carl's Jr. Super Bowl commercial to Dancing with the Stars to Baywatch. 28 years old. Adrian Curry, 39. That's America's Next Top Model winner. Leslie Odom Jr. is 40 years old today. It's a Tony Award winner for playing Aaron Burr in Hamilton. Ah. Oh, really? Yes. Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. No, that's an important part to play, and they, sure they won the award for it? Yep, the uh, Tony Award winner. Oh, that's good. Yep. Huh, Salil, yeah. Salil Moon Fry is 45. Do you have any idea who that is, Salil Punk, Moon Fry? Punky Brewster. Punky Brewster. And who she, remembers Punky Brewster? She's 45 today. Yep, yeah. yep, 45 years old today. Little Punky Brewster. Yeah, I remember her. Mm-hmm. Sure. Ever Carradine is 48. That's Naomi Putnam in The Handmaid's Tale. Vera Farmiga is 48. Jerry Hallwell is 49. That's Ginger Spice. Oh, that's why I mentioned. I, Tell yeah. me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the Spice Girls? I love this. I love me some yeah. Spice Girls. I think they're great. Yeah, they, they were good. Mm-hmm. They're good gr- girl group. Yep. David Robinson, 56. That's the NBA legend, ex-San Antonio Spurs Center. Kimberly Conrad is 59. That's Hugh Hefner's ex Yes, yeah, Hugh they, Hefner's ex. They were married uh, for a while, right? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. In <coughs> I can't excuse re- me, Kimberly Conrad. I can't remember if she was was she part of that the one of the girls next door when the girls next door were on. I don't know. Uh, Not sure. Or was she like one of the uh, older? Playboy bunnies that he was uh, married to years I, ago. I'm not sure. You might have to blow the dust off of her if she's one of the older ones. I'm going to have to. i got to look up You'll the find image that out. to see if um, within just shortly here okay. I should be able to find out right. if. Um, 
Oh, boy, by the looks of it, I don't recognize her, so it's okay. hard to tell. All right. Michelle Yao is 59. That's Philip Gorgio on Star Trek Discovery. Randy DeBars from the supergroup DeBars is 63. Didn't he, like, date uh, Janet Jackson at one I'm time? I'm not sure. I don't know. I think I don't she was know that one. In- involved with one of the DeBarge brothers. Mm-hmm. There was Chico, Mark, James, Bobby, Bunny, and L. That's how many they were. L. L. DeBarge. L. DeBarge. Yep. Could you imagine going through life with the name of L? Hey, L, where's M? <laughs> and N, and OP. <laughs> wow. Stephanie Kramer, 65, Detective D.D. McCall on Hunter. Catherine Hicks is 70 years old today. Oh, that's, um. wait, 70, you said? 70. Catherine Hicks? Catherine Hicks. I was going to say from American Idol. No. Boy, that's, I'm getting uh, all of my names and people mixed up that's today. That's okay. It's Friday. Ah. Annie, that's Annie Camden on the family-friendly 7th Heaven. That's who Catherine Hicks is. Oh, okay. Yep. Dorian Harwood, or Harewood, is 71. That's Private 8-Ball in Full Metal Jacket. Now, have you ever watched the movie Private, uh, I'm sorry, Full Metal Jacket? That's the guy that goes, I'm going to be Sergeant Hartman and you maggots and this and that. Yeah, you ever watch that? I, I know of it, but I've never watched the you movie. You have to no. watch the movie. You'll enjoy it. It's really, you and Gary should sit one night, get a, ba- get a bag of popcorn yeah. and watch Full Metal Jacket. You guys will laugh your behinds off. Is it like full of action? It's it's just, it's great. It's a really funny movie. I'm just kind of looking to see who is in, if I know anybody in the cast. Mm-hmm. Adam Baldwin. I don't yeah. know who Adam Baldwin is. Mm-hmm. Arlie Luke- Ermi, mm-hmm. Vincent yep. Dunfran- yep. Dunfranio. Yep. And I don't know a lot of these people even in the cast of it. Okay. Lucille Ball uh, passed away in 1989, celebrating a birthday today. And John Benet Ramsey would have been 31 years old today. John Benet. Yeah. Passed away at the age of six years old. That's sad to think. She should be um, an aspiring young woman by yeah, now. Definitely so. Hi, good morning. You're on the radio. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, look who it is. It's it's uh, Freaky Friday with Freaky Fredo. Yeah, man. What? Anyways, I dated uh, Lucy Ball back in 1958. Yeah, oh, ma'am. you did? Okay. Fredo, oh, I yeah, didn't know man. you were that old. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I've been around forever and a day. Yeah, man. When is your birthday, Fredo? Uh, it's in uh, the September. <coughs> anyway, sorry. Anyways, oh. that's when my birthday is in oh, September. Yeah, okay. Man. Okay. Where and, where uh, do we find you at today, Fredo? I understand you're actually, traveling. Actually, I'm in Orlando today. I'm oh. going to go uh, back to SeaWorld, visit that ex-girlfriend of mine in the whale section, and then I'm going to go over. <laughs> and then uh, you should have seen me at the hotel. I was looking good. I was working yeah. on my G-string tan line at the pool. Oh, and, uh, you yeah. know, it was this great, great day at the pool. And then now I'm going to go over to SeaWorld and just go over there and have a good time. Yeah, man. Oh, where are you staying at? Is it, uh, which hotel, may I ask? Uh, we're staying at the Radisson today. Yeah, man. Oh, usually you stay at Motel 5. Because they don't no, that's leave... Motel 6, the one that leaves the seat down for you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Motel yeah. 5, they leave nothing down for you at all. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, very good. So, very oh, good. wait, wait, wait. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, baby. How you doing? In Motel 6, you can have uh, Big Kitty in there with you. Yeah, you can have pets there, too. Yeah. Uh, hi, Bonnie. Hi, baby. How you doing? <laughs> hi, Fredo. I'm all right. There we go. He yeah, has, man. I he has to get us hello in there. Yeah. Hello. To the advances of Fredo. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 So, uh... <laughs> Go, go ahead, Fredo. I don't want to interrupt you. Dead air. Oh, there. no. So go I'm going to go do that. And then I got a big, I'm going to a big foot massage convention. Yeah, man. Oh, they have a foot massage convention in Orlando. Is that at the Orange yeah, County that's Convention what I'm here Center? For. Yeah, okay. man. But okay. you uh, entrepreneurs who know how to massage the feet. Yeah, man. Well, oh. maybe you'll learn some new techniques uh, about while you're there. About- yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about. You should see this one teacher, some big old fat guy. You know, he just comes in there and he goes, yeah, I know how to massage feet. And then some girl comes in. She walks out crying after the demonstration. <laughs> I don't know what goes on. <laughs> he had her in tears? <laughs> yeah, man. After he did a demonstration on oh, massaging gosh. her feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how that is. You're not supposed to cry when you get your foot rubbed. It's supposed supposed to be a pleasant experience. Absolutely. That's why with Fredo, you get a pleasant experience. This guy, I don't think he knew what he was doing, making a girl cry like that. Yeah, man. Lord have mercy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Uh, Anyways, well, let me go. I got to go say hi to this girl I met yesterday. Yeah, man. Oh, another. (laughs) God help you, Fredo. That's all I got to say. Have a great day. Have a great day in (laughs) Orlando. Yeah, man. All right. Bye-bye. Um. Such a character. He really is. He's a tool. (laughs)
Uh, he really is. He's a tool. It seems like he gets places, too. Yeah. And Well, at least he's not everywhere that you're going today. Yeah. Usually he's following you around, yeah, Evan. Yeah, this is true. So um, today, Bonnie, it, it's a great day to be alive because it's International Beer Day. Uh, it's yeah. International Beer Day. So, Bonnie, do you have any beer in your fridge at home? I don't. I can't say that I do today. Okay. When you go to the store today, would you please go get yourself a single beer, take it home, your favorite, what is your favorite beer, what is your beer of choice? Beer choice is Budweiser. Okay, very good. Get a can of, are you a can or a bottle girl? Um, Either or. Doesn't matter. You don't have a preference. I like it in a frosty mug too. Okay, all right, very good. So get a a glass at home and put it in the freezer. When you get home, let it sit in there for about an hour. Get Go buy yourself a bottle of beer. And pour it in the glass about an hour later, and please have a drink for me and celebrate International Beer Day, because I, I don't drink. I would do it, but I'm in between jobs today, and I absolutely oh. can't drink on Friday. Okay, so how about when you get home from job number two? Um, no, because I have to get up early morning tomorrow and do my run, and I never okay. um, drink the night before Oh, I that's exercise. right. You like, to, you like to run on an empty stomach, not on a yeah. beer stomach. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that works. I might have to wait till tomorrow night. Okay. Maybe right. when we get to the restaurant, I'll have one there and celebrate it. All right. So then if you can't have a beer today, an international beer today, do you like root beer? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Like so, an A&W. Okay. Well, then it's National Root Beer Float Day. All right. So now there's no reason why in between jobs today you cannot indulge in a root beer float. That is true. Right? You yep. can have a root beer float and celebrate National Root Beer Float Day. That's right, because I just bought some ice cream yesterday, too. There you go. Now, Do you have any A&W root beer at your house? All I need is the root beer. Okay. Do they sell A&W root beer around here in Oh, it's stores? so good. Go to your local store, Publix, I, Aldi's, whatever. Maybe it's because I haven't looked for it that I haven't yeah. seen the yep. A&W brand yep. of it. Get yourself a nice little scoop of ice cream, scoop that bad boy up, put it in a bowl. Oh, yeah. Or actually, no, put it in a frosted glass, like you said. Mm. Put it in a frosted glass, crack open that uh, <laughs> um, uh, A&W, A&W, uh, A&W root beer. Get all nice and fizzy and in just, the ice cream. And just, you know, just kind of, you know, just pour it in there and uh, just let it kind of... Just like that, right over the ice cream. I miss uh, stopping Man. at an A&W. I, we, have, we had quite a few of them up north mm-hmm. when I was growing up. Yep. And, boy, especially with the A&W, with the Brazier store, mm-hmm. with their, where they made the food. They made mm. some good hamburgers and yes. dogs to go For along sure. with the floats. For sure. Yep. It's Without a doubt. old-fashioned and good times. Lastly, Bonnie, it is National Cycle to Work Day. Leave the car keys home. Grab a helmet. And commute to work on a bicycle. That's right. That's right. Yep. Ride the bike. I've, I've been meaning to ride my bicycle home. I still got to get my bicycle and uh, bring it up here in my RAV4. Oh, you know, I was talking to a, a client on my table the other day, mm-hmm. and he was telling me how good his fold-up bicycle really is. Oh, wow. Now, I've been hearing, like, different things where, I don't know, maybe I read or I heard some sort of thing that they kind of fell apart, fall apart after a while. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. He said no. He ordered his two through Amazon. Oh, wow. I think he paid roughly $265 or so for it. It's a fold-up bike. Okay. And he said it was a little bit of assembly required when he got it home. Mm-hmm. But it's, he said it's perfectly fine. All right. So I might <clears> still <throat> order mine that way and, Very good. and get a fold-up kind. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had a, a Kermit the Frog in my throat. Ah. Um, tomorrow is National Mustard Day. So make sure and have a hot dog with some mustard or something with mustard. Do you prefer mustard ha- or ketchup? Um, it really depends what kind of mood I'm in. Now, I had a ham sandwich for dinner last night. I had mustard on my ham sandwich. Oh, that sounds pretty good. It's also yeah. National Disc Golf Day tomorrow and National Lighthouse Day. But the most important day tomorrow is National Purple Heart Day. That's where we remember and honor the men and women who bravely represented and sacrificed for this country. And I am proud to say that my father is a recipient of a Purple Heart. Mm-hmm. He has one, and it's on display in our home. Mm-hmm. We, you mentioned um, A&W, too, earlier. They mm-hmm. had kind of like a promotion uh, just a couple of weeks ago where mm-hmm. you, if you bought, purchased their root beer floats during a day, and all those proceeds were going mm-hmm. to uh, veterans yes. and, and homeless veterans yes. and that. Bonnie, you're going to like the holidays on Sunday, what they have decided, because this is your day. 
It's International Cat Day on Sunday. Is it really? It's International Cat Day on Sunday. So okay. worship your kitties. I'll have a little party for the both of them. Yep. We'll have a like, give them some special meow mix and yep. and some milk or some cream. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll be enjoying that. It's also National Dying to Know Day on Sunday, along with National Happiness Happens Day. But um, here's the best one. All these days that they come up with, huh? I know. It's amazing. I'm <laughs> glad I found this website. Yeah. It's very informative. Lastly, on Sunday, it's National Sneak Some Zucchini Onto Your Neighbor's Porch Day. All right. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> My neighbor can do that anytime because I think he grows some zucchini, actually. He's yep. given me some before. Yep. And so if you're wondering what to do, yeah. that's uh, how you celebrate this weekend, courtesy of uh, your friends right nice. here at the morning show. I have some new neighbors right across the street with do a you? brand new home, so maybe God. I should sneak a zucchini over there. Do you remember there. years ago, Bonnie, when you moved into a neighborhood, they had this thing called the welcome wagon. And you'd make yeah. a phone call and the welcome wagon would come oh, yeah. and they would bring you like all these gifts. I haven't seen a welcome wagon in like 30 years. You know. Since you brought that up now, since you mentioned it, I mm-hmm. had forgotten all about the welcome wagon. Yeah. It's true. I haven't seen one in like 30 years. Yeah. Is it a thing of the past? It, or? it definitely is because I remember when I was a kid living down in uh, North Lauderdale when we moved in, uh, we contacted the welcome wagon people and like yeah. the next day they showed up at our house with like all these housewarming gifts. They should still have that. Yeah. Definitely agree. 722 right now on the Get Up and Go show. It's time for news all brought to you. By Florida Blue, your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, helping families take control of their health for more than 75 years. Bonnie's at the news desk with the headlines. Thank you, Evan. Florida is reporting 20,133 new COVID-19 cases. The figure is from the Centers of Disease Control and is the second highest number of daily cases since the pandemic began. The state also added 84 new virus-related deaths. The feud between the White House and Governor Ron DeSantis goes on. During a White House briefing, Press Secretary Jen Psaki noted that COVID is surging in Florida. The governor has taken steps that are counter counter to public health recommendations. Psaki called the pandemic a public health issue and not a political issue. The Coast Guard and law enforcement looked offshore and on beaches between Wabasso and Sebastian in the second full day of a search for missing 42-year-old kayaker Donald Waters. So far, nothing has been found since his inflatable boat was pulled from the ocean by fishermen south of the Sebastian Inlet Tuesday night. The U.S. Coast Guard, Indian River County Sheriff's Office, and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission were all involved in the second day of their search. Everything is essentially the same, said Coast Guard Petty Officer 3rd Class Ryan Estrada around 5 p.m. Thursday. No changes. We still have surface and air assets out there. The city of Port St. Lucie announced Thursday that Amazon will be building a 1 million square foot fulfillment center near I-95 and Midway Road. WPTV's Derek Lowe has the story. Once completed, the new Amazon fulfillment center will be the largest building in all of Port St. Lucie. It's going to be huge, a million square feet of fulfillment center. Located on the southeast corner of Midway Road and I-95. It's just really exciting to know that they're going to be able to provide over 500 jobs. Amazon is now the third distribution center planning to come to Port St. Lucie. Over $100 million of investment in our local economy. Recently, FedEx and Cheney Brothers also announced plans to join the city. Together, the three employers will create over 1,000 jobs, making Port St. Lucie a place to live and work. It's really exciting. I'm so thrilled for all of us here in Port St. Lucie. The new site will house 98 loading bays for trucks. The city's vice mayor says prior traffic concerns have been considered and corrected. I think through the planning process, they, are, they have resolved that issue with regard to turn lanes. Amazon's starting salaries begin at $15 per hour. City officials say that construction will be complete by either late summer or fall of 2022. Reporting in Port St. Lucie, I'm Derek Lowe, WPTV News Channel 5. Going to the grocery store or the mall, the city recommends you mask up. Going to City Hall, 
the city requires you to. The City Commission Thursday approved a mask requirement for city buildings, regardless of vaccination status, and recommended people wear masks indoors while in public places. The new policies passed during a special meeting that was called last minute in response to the recent surge in COVID-19 cases locally and statewide. It was the first meeting in months where all commissioners wore masks and chairs in the meeting chambers were socially distanced, a signal of health officials backtracking on their previous calls to loosen precautionary measures for the vaccinated. The commission gave city manager David Dyes the flexibility to withdraw or reenact the mask requirement and recommendation as needed. Governor Ron DeSantis in May signed an executive order restricting local government's from placing mask mandates on private businesses. Well, lastly, a guy in Ohio named Joel Wegner has two kids with Down syndrome, 18-year-old Josh and 21-year-old Mary Kate, and he was worried about them finding jobs, so he decided to create jobs for them. He bought an ice cream truck, and they launched a business together in April called Special Need Treats. Since then, they've made over 5,000 sales, so business has been booming this summer. He hopes it encourages other businesses to hire people with special needs. Minnesota Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins vowed to follow the NFL's COVID-19 protocols to avoid contracting the virus or being deemed a close contact ahead of returning to practice Thursday after being activated off the reserve COVID-19 list. Cousins and quarterback Nick, Nate Staley, rather Nate Stanley rather, were subjected to the league's COVID-19 protocols as of Saturday after rookie Kellen Mond tested positive for the virus. Cousins and Stanley were deemed high risk close contacts and had to isolate for five days before being eligible to return to practice. News time is 728 with weather and traffic together next. Do you need health insurance or want to switch plans? You can sign up for a new Florida Blue Health plan or switch to a better one for as little as $0 per month if you qualify. Call us today, 772-621-8830, or visit floridablue.com slash centers to learn more. To be eligible for zero monthly cost, your marketplace monthly advance premium tax credit must equal to or be more than the premium. Policies have limitations and exclusions. Benefits available in certain plans and counties. Florida Blue and Florida Blue HMO are independent licensees of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. It is 729 on the Get Up and Go show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for traffic and weather together. Bonnie? Well, we do see one incident. This is an accident, and it's on I-95 southbound in Hope Sound at mile marker 98 with no lanes blocked. This one is I-95 southbound. And there's your latest look at traffic. We have 76 right now, Palm City, and in Fairfield, Connecticut this morning, it's a partly cloudy 65. Here's our weekend update at WPTV. Your WPTV first alert forecast calls for temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s with a few showers towards the coast and a couple of spotty downpours for the morning commute. This afternoon, highs in the low 90s with feels like temperatures in the triple digits. We'll see partly sunny skies throughout the day with a 50% chance for showers and storms mainly towards the lake. Tomorrow, morning coastal rainfall followed by a 60% chance for afternoon inland showers and storms with highs in the low 90s. Sunday, hot and humid weather continues. Highs in the low 90s, some morning showers, then everything moves west throughout the day. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall on WSTUAM 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. No hype, just facts. I'm Casey, and I invite you to tune into the Casey Ingram Show at my new time, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Hear from community leaders, learn about some of our great nonprofit organizations, get the latest updates from our elected officials, and meet the candidates. Even rock and roll legends have joined the show from time to time. I'm conservative but not divisive, bringing you the talk of the community. It is a fun and interesting hour beginning at 10 a.m. every Wednesday on WSTU AM 1450 and Facebook Live at the Casey Ingram Show. Hi, this is 
Denny Artachi, host of the Today with Denny show, where we talk about financial and healthy well-being from a common sense perspective. This is a show where we cover what's on your mind, like local, world, and entertainment news. So tune in, have fun, share your story Thursday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. on WSTU 1450 AM radio. Call the Lot Brothers for all your property insurance needs. Hi, I'm Frankie Lot. Give me a call, 468-1009. That's 468-1009. We represent the most competitive markets across the Treasure Coast and throughout the state of Florida, insuring your home, condo, auto, and boat, plus commercial. The Lot Brothers are available 24 hours a day for your convenience. Call me at Lot Insurance Services, 468-1009. The first time I stepped into St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, I figured it would just be one of my many stops on my road to the perfect engagement ring. My fiancé means the world to me, so I wanted something extra special. I found a huge selection of engagement rings at great prices, and my worry about finding the perfect engagement ring was quickly replaced with exceptional customer service. St. Lucie Jewelry's over 400 five-star reviews really told the story. I finally picked a ring, and it was perfect. She was floored, and then the tears came. Hi, this is Hawk Levy, owner of St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins. We're now celebrating 26 years, voted best diamond dealers, best jewelry buyers, and best jeweler year after year. Come celebrate with us in opening our third location at 1335 St. Lucie West Boulevard. We invite you to take a tour of our competition, but then come see us last. The Get Up and Go Show would love to hear from you live on the air. Give us a call at any time. Now let's get back to the program. Here's Evan and Bonnie. This is not headline news. The Rock may do WrestleMania 38, making the only things he hasn't done, Antique Roadshow and your last family reunion. A Billie Eilish concert movie is coming to Disney+. Plus, Or as anyone who's ever heard her sing put it, the home of Loki just added croaky. The executive producer of Jeopardy may be the new host. I'll take, then what was the point of all those damn tryouts for a thousand? In sports, two Detroit Lions fans got into a fight at training camp practice. Their punishment will be to remain members of the Detroit Lions. (laughs) And shipping delays are leading to higher toy prices. But not the toys sold by Adam and Eve. This is not Headline News. From not Headline News, we go to the stupid stuff. And now it's time for Stupid News. It's so stupid and awesome. Where we ask the important questions. Are some people too stupid to live? Why are people so stupid? Are you effing stupid? All right, so we're going to go to Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Where 25-year-old Alvin Gist robbed the first American check-cashing store in Louisville, Kentucky. That's right. Unfortunately, Gist didn't get the gist, get it? Gist didn't get the gist of not robbing the same check-cashing store where you're a regular customer. Oh, oh, so he's a regular there. Yeah, he's a regular there. He's kind of like robbing from himself then, isn't he? Yeah, pretty much. I mean... Well, they recognized him when he walked in, and when the police paid a visit to his apartment, they found all the money and the clothes he wore during the robbery. Uh Uh-huh. Not the brightest bulb in the light socket, I will say. I'm glad I don't use one of those uh, check-cashing places ever. Little little hint. If you're going to rob a check-cashing store, um, make sure you're not the customer. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure you're not the customer. Um, when committing a robbery, the element of surprise always comes in very handy, Bonnie. Unfortunately, this was news to Michigan's Casey Allen and David Connell. The duo went into a gas station recently and warned the cashier, warned the cashier that they were planning on coming back with guns to rob the place and gave the cashier a detailed plan of the crime just wait till later till the till the bigger bear comes right that sounds like the tale of the three bears or something wait 
wait till Papa Bear comes. Those details included cutting her in for a piece of the action if she agreed to cooperate with the robbery. And did they do this while they had a gun on her? Did they well, give her this offer, an offer she couldn't refuse? Well, th- this is before they came back. So the cashier cooperated, but not with the crooks. Oh. She called the police, and when the robbers returned to actually rob the place, Good girl. as promised, police made the easy arrest. All right. Well, she made the right decision then, too. Stupid <laughs> idiot robbers. Why, in God's name, would you warn a place of business that, We're gonna be back listen, here I'm going later. home, I'm going to go eat some breakfast, and when I come back, I'm going to rob the place. This is what's going to go down. Yeah, this is the way it's going to happen. <laughs> wow. That is uh, stupidity at its best. And they think that other people are just uh, stupid enough to not even call the police yeah. or do anything about it. Exactly. Um, there's a 29-year-old woman named Talia Morales who just recently got engaged. Okay? She got engaged last month. Now, she's getting a ton of love on TikTok after she polled her bridesmaids and asked how much they're willing to spend on her wedding. Okay? How much they're willing to spend on her wedding. She wanted to know. She did it through this online poll. No one else would see their answers. And she asked things like, well how much they could spend on their dresses, where they want to stay, and if they want their hair and makeup done by a professional. That's kind of nice that she's allowing them in. She's kind of saying, what's in your budget, friends? Well, she's asking. Yeah. She even asked what style of bridesmaid dress they liked the best and included photos. Oh, man. So maybe she was looking for some ideas. So maybe they won't end up with a dress they'll never wear again. She says a lot of brides got so caught up in the planning that they don't think about how much everyone else has to shell out. So she's trying to be as considerate as possible, and she puts spending limits on the amount of money that the bridesmaids could spend. I think she, this now this lady has to be the coolest bride to be that I've ever heard of. I would want to meet her. You're not going to say that when I tell you the rest of the story. Uh oh, don't. Yeah. Say, don't don't ruin it for me. Well, I thought there was somebody good right here. The bridesmaid dresses can't cost less than five hundred dollars. Oh, they cannot cost less than five hundred dollars, according to the bride. Well, you know, maybe I shouldn't uh, start to judge all this because mm-hmm. I don't know how wealthy or well off all of these mm-hmm. this bride and her bridesmaids are. If the bridesmaids are going to get their hair done. They have to go to a hairstylist that charges a minimum of $300 to do their hair. $300 Mm -hmm. for one sitting? $300. If they want their makeup done by a professional, they have to go to a professional that charges a minimum of $400. Wow. Now what do you think about this bride? (laughs) Totally changes your taste, doesn't it? um, Setting the prices rather high there. Yeah. Um, But like I said, I don't know what kind of wealth they come from. Uh, Maybe they're all friends that are people that can afford this. Mm -hmm. So who am I to judge? Yeah. Um, I I, I don't know. I I just think that um, telling your bridesmaids (laughs) how much the minimum amount you can spend on your bridesmaids dress is a little redonkulous, in my opinion. Yeah. The Uh, amounts she's choosing sound a little redonkulous to me. Yes, exactly. Let's go to Louisiana, where a guy in Louisiana is opening a trailer park. But it's not just your average trailer park. It's a trailer park for swingers. (laughs) Yes, a trailer park for swingers. You see guys coming out in their pineapple shorts, huh? Yeah, right? (laughs) The motto of the trailer park is, bring your house and share your spouse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The name of it is T-Boys Swingers Trailer Park. And for now, it's just an empty piece of land about 80 miles west of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But the guy running it plans to add a nude pool and a oh. nude yoga studio, a poker hall where you can play strip poker, mm-hmm. and a key party cabana. Now, there's a sign out front that says you have to send a picture of your spouse to get approved, 
which he claims is just a joke, but people from all over the country Man. have already been sending pictures, and it's set to open next year in May. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think he'll be successful with the seven because there are a lot of swingers, aren't there? there there's probably I, more than we even know. I couldn't tell you. I, I could not tell you. But there's a, a news story. Literally, the guy made the news about this. And there's a – if I could find the picture I'm looking for, I can't find the darn picture. Um, I'm, I'm going to let that in, load here. Here we go. Okay, so there it is right there. Look, there's there it is. T-Boy Swinger Trailer Park <laughs> right there. And this news reporter went out and did a news story on it, and it's hilarious. The guy is – a hundred percent legit. Yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah, and and it's it's legal too. No. Yep. I'm, no. Yeah. Perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. Yeah. And yeah, it's um you know it's kind of brilliant because like I, I said I I it's my belief that there are a lot of swingers and mm-hmm. you know if that's his thing and he can make it legit and you know make I don't know how nice he's going to make the place or. <laughs> Yeah. You know how reputable the place if if he keeps it reputable, mm-hmm. you know, it it could be it could be a surefire thing. Yep. Um a transient man named David DeMazin went into the Cosmopolitan Casino on Friday in Las Vegas and threatened to detonate a nuke. And oh. now for those of you that don't know what a nuke is, it's a bomb. Yeah. Okay, he allegedly said, "Quote I have a nuclear weapon. I will kill everyone here. Wow. He also added, quote, I will blow up the whole country. Security called police, and they arrested the guy and charged him with making Ooh. a false threat and conveying a false act of terrorism. And to be clear, he didn't even have a nuclear weapon on him. The oh, reason he, he did it yeah. is because he lost all his money in the casino. Uh, just go <sighs> home. Call it a day and go home. Be done with it. Yeah. Take simply, your losses, lick simply, your wounds. Simply agreed. Yeah, hundred fifty percent, hundred and fifty percent. Be done with it. That's just he just went insane about it. Yep. What yep. an insane thing to do. Yes, definitely so. Um, a thirty-eight-year-old North Carolina woman broke into a house and stole medication, a power saw, coins, knives, socks, and jewelry. Okay. Medication, knives, jewelry, socks, socks. Jewelry. She sounds like she just wanted all of the items. The whole enchilada. Yeah. And she brought her seven month old son with her when she was being arrested after she asked if she could pawn her baby for bail money to get out of jail. What an imbecile. Oh, wow. It just it takes all kinds, doesn't it? Wow. That's very sad. That's very, very beyond. Sad. That's beyond. That's beyond sad. Yeah. Um. I. I can't believe that she asked if she could pawn her baby for bail money. I hope the baby has uh, relatives that can just take her, take the baby away from all this. And said baby, maybe will not even have to grow up and hear of this sort of thing. That's um. That's that's insane. Yeah. That's, that's totally, very sad. Total. Totally insane. She needs help. Uh, um, she needs more than help. She needs a new life. Yeah. She needs. She needs to go to T Boys, <laughs> Swingers, <laughs> Swingers Place, and uh, oh. maybe get a membership or something like that. But uh, anyway, that's your stupid news uh, for Friday, August the sixth, twenty and twenty one. Time for news once again. It's all brought to you this morning by Florida Blue, your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, helping families take control of their health for more than 75 years. Bonnie has the headlines. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Evan. Non-emergent surgeries and procedures at the three Cleveland Clinic hospitals in Martin and St. Lucie counties will be postponed starting Monday following steps taken last week at the Cleveland Clinic hospitals in Indian River County, a top official said on Thursday. The move comes as COVID-positive patients in the facilities increase. There were nearly 195 COVID-positive patients hospitalized in the four 
Cleveland Clinic hospitals across the Treasure Coast, including two hospitals in Martin and one hospital each in St. Lucie and Indian River counties, according to Dr. Richard Rothman, Institute Chair for Hospital Medicine for the Cleveland Clinic Florida region. That's a quadruple fold increase from the 45 hospitalized patients on July 2nd. The 195 patients also is an uptick from the 179 hospitalized COVID positive patients Monday at the four Cleveland Clinic Treasure Coast hospitals. Martin County School District hires more nurses and WPTV's Todd Wilson was on hand for the emergency meeting last night and has this. Lazy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. It's an emergency meeting with the Martin County School District. They just approved to move to hire additional nurses for the coming school year. I'm always open to hearing recommendations from our staff and from the superintendent moving forward. Superintendent John Malay says the district is working with the local Department of Health on issues of contact tracing and quarantining. Working with the local DOH will require the district to hire five additional nurses for eight weeks and one additional registered nurse for eight months of work. Each high school will have an additional RN. They will share one RN. So, and the, all of them could help each other, but one will serve as the middle schools. And then at the elementary level, we'll also have one RN overseeing the COVID operations. The contracted nurses will work for four and a half days during the week and a half day on Sunday. Malay says these nurses are temporary. They're waiting to find out if they've been awarded grant money to take things to the next level. That would put an additional nurse at every school. So we thought this is a good measure that in the interim period, the next eight weeks, until we find out about that extra grant, yeah. that we can still provide the services that we need. Malay says they should find out by August 15th if the district has been awarded the grant money. He says the nurses will be assigned before the new school year begins on August 11th at a cost of just over $200,000. In Martin County, Todd Wilson, WPTV News Channel 5. Next year, Florida communities could start seeing some of the dollars from a large settlement against pharmaceutical companies blamed for fueling the opioid pandemic. WPTV's Megan McRoberts has more. We're definitely ready to get it. A survivor and now an advocate for opioid abuse, John Nelson is closely watching the settlement agreements being made by big pharma companies blamed for feeding the opioid crisis. We're going to look into it. He's hopeful he might be able to see some of that settlement money trickling down to the states to support his nonprofit, FamiliesRecover.org. Is it going to make a difference? depends on how they divvy it up. Cities and counties across Florida with the Florida Attorney General's office have spent more than a year pulling together a mutual agreement that says where the money will go once settlements start getting paid out, expected by late 2022. Yeah, we represent a few dozen cities and counties around the state. Attorney Eric Romano represents Fort Pierce and St. Lucie County. Particularly South Florida has seemed to be kind of the epicenter um, of the opioid epidemic. That's why Romano says Florida will stand to gain about 7% of the settlement dollars going to all 50 states and thousands of local communities. So far, a $26 billion settlement has been reached with more than $1.3 billion of that headed to Florida. This mutual agreement will break out payments to the counties, state, and cities over 18 years. One of the concerns that everybody involved had was making sure that governments don't take money from the opioid settlement and use it for other projects. Romano says that's why this agreement also lays out how the money can be used, including supporting treatment options, giving to community groups, education, and connecting people with resources. Personally, I think it should go to victims, advocates. Nelson feels the settlement is a drop in the bucket for the pain caused by the opioid distributors, but hopes it can make some impact on curbing the epidemic. Still rampant. It's full blown. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. Florida utility customers are being warmed of a scam. They are getting calls from people claiming to be energy company employees who threaten to shut off service if money isn't paid within minutes. Duke Energy says it heard of over 900 such calls last month alone, and its customers were scammed out of over $14,000. And lastly, an Orlando theme park is now under new ownership. Advent Health has purchased the Holy Land Experience for $32 million with plans to develop the property into a health care complex.
The U.S. women's basketball team will play in the gold medal round on Sunday, but will have to wait several hours to find out whether they'll face Japan or France. The U.S. beat both teams in group play earlier in the tournament. News time is 7.51. We'll have weather and traffic together next. The first time I stepped into St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, I figured it would just be one of my many stops on my road to the perfect engagement ring. My fiancé means the world to me, so I wanted something extra special. I found a huge selection of engagement rings at great prices, and my worry about finding the perfect engagement ring was quickly replaced with exceptional customer service. St. Lucie Jewelry's over 400 five-star reviews really told the story. I finally picked a ring, and it was perfect. She was floored, and then the tears came. Hi. This is Hawk Levy, owner of St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins. We're now celebrating 26 years, voted best diamond dealers, best jewelry buyers, and best jeweler year after year. Come celebrate with us in opening our third location at 1335 St. Lucie West Boulevard. We invite you to take a tour of our competition, but then come see us last. on the Get Up and Go show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for traffic and weather together. Bonnie? We do see an accident on I-95 southbound. This one is in Hope Sound at mile marker 98. And uh, FHP saying there's no lanes that are blocked from this accident. So traffic's moving through fine right there. U.S. Highway 1 looking good throughout Martin and St. Lucie County. Also, there's your latest look at traffic. We have 76 here in Stewart. Clouds, Austin, Texas at 77. Here's our weekend weather from WPTV. Your WPTV first alert forecast calls for temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s with a few showers towards the coast and a couple of spotty downpours for the morning commute. This afternoon, highs in the low 90s with feels like temperatures in the triple digits. We'll see partly sunny skies throughout the day with a 50% chance for showers and storms, mainly towards the lake. Tomorrow, morning coastal rainfall followed by a 60% chance for afternoon inland showers and storms with highs in the low 90s. Sunday, hot and humid weather continues. Highs in the low 90s, some morning showers, then everything moves west throughout the day. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall on WSTUAM 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. Have you heard this one? A priest and a rabbi come into this radio station. (laughs) Really, it's a priest and a rabbi. Right here, Friday mornings beginning at 9. Here on WSTU AM 1450. Bring your questions and join their lively conversation with Father Christian from St. Mary's Episcopal Church and Rabbi Matt Durbin from the Temple Beit Hayim. It's a priest and a rabbi. Friday mornings at 9 here on WSTU. The professionals at Mark Breckville Certified Public Accountants are proud to sponsor Treasure Coast Solutions, a community service program designed to provide information you can use, a local perspective on national issues, local solutions to meet your individual concerns. At our firm, we believe that information is knowledge, and with knowledge comes the power to have a positive impact on our lives, businesses, schools, and community. If you would like one of our professionals to address your personal financial or business concerns, please give us a call to set up an appointment at 220 220- 3380. Are you an entrepreneur or business owner along the Treasure Coast? Well, then you should be tuning in to Small Biz Florida from the Florida Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. Hi, I'm Tom Kinder, your host for Small Biz Florida. Entrepreneurs and business owners will learn how the Florida SBDC and IRSC can help you start, grow, and accelerate your business. Monday mornings at 11 on WSTU 1450 and worldwide on WPSLTV.com. The Slam Body Laser Spa, the wait is over. What are you waiting for?
for. Call the Slim Body Laser Spa in Stewart today and start losing inches today. That's right, lose belly fat, your double chin, flabby thighs, upper arm fat. Well, you get the picture. In a short series of laser-assisted weight loss treatments, you can lose inches of unwanted fat. Call 223-5885. The Slim Body Laser Spa, the weight is over. Lose weight, feel great, and look fantastic. With a little help from Dr. Fred J. Rizacker of Slim Body Laser Spa, East Ocean Boulevard in Stewart. And they're online. Visit their website, slimbodylaser.com. In a few short treatments, you'll see results. Lose three, six, even nine inches of unwanted belly fat. The wait is over. Call today, 223-5885. That's 223-5885. The Slim Body Laser Spa, the wait is over. Today's to-do list. Stop and get coffee, go to work, swing by the grocery store, eat dinner, go to sleep, get up, do it all over again. Seacoast believes spending time with your loved ones should be on your everyday to-do list. Seacoast Air Conditioning, family owned and operated for over 38 years, knows the importance of family. Whether it's reading a bedtime story, sharing your day around the dinner table, or just picking up the phone and calling mom. These are the moments that are remembered for a lifetime. Don't break prices, don't roast, call Seacoast. Today in Ag News, on the Southeast Ag Network, a project to remove a section of the old trail roadbed in Miami-Dade County section of the Everglades has been finished months ahead of schedule. According to the News Service of Florida, the completion of the project, which was announced this week, will allow more fresh water to freely flow south through the Everglades. The road, which was built nearly 100 years ago, had blocked the southward flow. Ron Bergeron with the South Florida Water Management District says restoring the natural flow should also help with other water-related issues like red tide. Moving water south is so important that reduces the amount of water going east and west. Reestablish the natural sheet flow from the northern Everglades all the way to Florida Bay. Now, the removal of the row bed is expected to increase the southerly flow of fresh water by more than 220 billion gallons per year. If you purchased Super S Super Track 303, Super S 303, Cam 2 Pro Max 303, or Cam 2 303 Tractor Hydraulic Fluid from Tractor Supply, Orschland, Rural King, or Atwoods, you may be entitled to a cash payment as part of a class action settlement. Learn more by visiting 303 Tractor Hydraulic Fluid Settlement.com or calling 866 742 49 these specific products fail to meet OEM specifications and viscosity requirements and could also cause severe damage to your equipment. This notice is authorized by the federal court and is directed to those who bought 303 tractor hydraulic fluid from Tractor Supply, Orschland, Rural King, or Atwoods between December 1st, 2013 and the present. Your claim deadline is December 29th, 2021, and you may be eligible for a monetary award. Act now by visiting our class action website at 303tractorhydraulicfluidsettlement.com or by calling 866-742-4955. Randall Wiseman, Southeast Agnet. Let's get back to the Get Up and Go Show. Here's Evan and Bonnie. Coming up on 759 on the Get Up and Go Show, we have one more hour to go. Get ready to call in in the 8 o'clock hour because we are going full freestyle for the first 15 minutes of the program. So don't you dare touch that dial. We will be right back. Right, Bonnie? We will. We will do so. Sorry, we're going to have lots we, of stuff to talk about. Unless I fall asleep, I no, might don't do be that. here. <laughs> Get me anyway, Wake yes, me up. let me nudge you. Uh, we're WSCU Stewart, Martin County's Heritage Station. The news is coming up next, and the band played on.
I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. New Jersey's Democratic governor will announce a mandate for schools there today. Virginia's also just joined other states requiring, though the Republican governors in Texas and Florida banned that. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona disapproves. Our kids have suffered enough. Let's do what we know works. Let's do what we know works across the country. Uh, we shouldn't get pol policy. Sh doesn't have a role in this. Some kids are already back to school. The new year's begun from Arizona to Georgia. The Taliban went on the, on the attack today, assassinating the country's head of media operations. Militants have taken over more parts of the country as U.S. troops complete a withdrawal from Afghanistan this month. After bickering over amendments late into the night, the Senate is a vote tomorrow trying to end debate on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. The Senate has considered 22 amendments during this process, and we've been willing to consider many more. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will get a key economic update this morning on the job market expected to show about the same number of jobs created last month as in June, around 850,000. It's a sixth straight tough day at the airport for people flying Spirit Airlines, canceling a third of its flights today. Fox's Evan Brown, live in Broward County, Florida. Yeah, uh, Dave, for a week now, Spirit Airlines has been canceling upwards of 60% of its flights each day, stranding travelers and offering refunds. Their CEO, Ted Christie, spoke publicly Thursday, blaming the airline's problems on bad weather grounding certain flights, causing flight crews to be scattered or reaching their maximum stretch of flying time with no relief due to short staffing. He warns flights will continue to be canceled at high rates over the next few days as they try to get their planes and people back into position, Dave. Evan, the U.S. struck gold today in beach volleyball for women. It's now 31 gold medals to the Olympics. The U.S. leads all countries now with 95 medals. America's listening to Fox News. Oh, according to research, 82% of people remember radio ads. That means that 82% of you listening right now will remember that this is an ad for ZipRecruiter. If you're hiring, 82% of you will recall that ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster and easier. And 82% of you will note that you can try ZipRecruiter for free today. But you have to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Yes, free. 82% of you will keep in mind that ZipRecruiter's technology finds qualified people for your job and actively invites them to apply. Go! Is that you? Who are you talking to? 82% of you will also know that I, um, live with my mom. But the most important thing to note is that ZipRecruiter works. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Will you be part of the 82% who remember where you can try ZipRecruiter for free? It's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Again, that exclusive link is ZipRecruiter.com slash free. How much? Free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Today marks seven months since the deadly Capitol attack. President Biden signed legislation in the Rose Garden awarding congressional gold medals to first responders who defended the Capitol during the January 6th riot. You stood in the breach. You did your duty. The duty to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The medals will be placed in four locations. The Capitol Police Headquarters the Metropolitan Police Department, the U.S. Capitol, and the Smithsonian Institution. At the White House, Rachel Sutherland, Fox News. The president wants more of us to never go to gas stations again, saying this is the future for cars. It's electric, and, and uh, there's no turning back. The question is whether we'll lead or fall behind in the race for the future. His goal? Half of all vehicle sales by 2030 be electric. The president also signed an executive order increasing fuel efficiency standards on gas-powered cars, SUVs, and trucks. Football's back. The NFL kicked off the preseason with the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Dallas Cowboys 16-3 as the NFL tries to tackle COVID. Minnesota Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins returned to training camp Thursday, removed from the COVID-19 reserve list after being labeled a close contact of Kellen Mond. Cousins confirming he never tested positive for COVID-19 as the unvaccinated QB plans to adhere to protocols this season. That is what it's going to come down to is did you have a close contact and so I'm going to be vigilant. Those protocols require masks to be worn in indoor facilities by unvaccinated players as well as daily testing while Chicago Bears tight end Jimmy Graham expressed his frustration over these protocols despite getting vaccinated himself. We all showed up here, uh, put our health, put our family's health on the line to play this game. So it's 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 pretty frustrating when you show up and you know I mean, I've done everything else. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. The Wall Street stock futures are mixed before the jobs report. The S&P 500 NASDAQ hit record highs yesterday. I'm Dave Anthony. This is Fox News. 
Hi, this is Denny Artachi, your host. When is the last time you did a checkup for your retirement plans? Are you getting enough income? How about minimizing taxes? And what's the plan in case you get sick? When is the last time you looked at your life insurance? You might be able to get better coverage with more benefits. So give me a call, 561-537-5897. That's 561-537-5897. Advisory services offered through Blackridge Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. Securities offered through Peak Ridge Brokerage Services, LLC. Blackridge Asset Management is a separate and independent entity from Peak Brokerage Services, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC. Seven, nine. And this is Bonnie Ashley. And we're the Get Up and Go Show. Listen to us Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. from our palatial radio studio. We'll have news, weather, and traffic together. Plus, we'll have our usual cast of characters to entertain you and some surprise guests as well. So listen to the Get Up and Go Show Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. On Martin County's Heritage Station, a.m. 1450 WSTU. <laughs> Great food. First class presentation, too. I'm impressed. Do you use catering services for client seminars and other marketing activities? Do you sometimes have working lunches? Then you know how important it is to make a great impression. You'll make that great impression with chef-prepared business catering from Ellie's Downtown Deli. From simple box lunch drop-offs to buffet setup and breakdown, you'll always enjoy tasty cuisine tastefully presented. And with Ellie's Downtown Deli, going first class costs no more than settling for a mundane meal. This is Chef Mark Muller of Ellie's Downtown Deli. Drop by or give me a call to find out why our business catering means business for your business. Ellie's Downtown Deli, located at 18 Southeast 6th Street, Stewart, just off Colorado Avenue. Call 772-781-6605 or visit elliesdowntowndeli.com. Coming to you live from Stewart, Florida, the greatest little town in the world. It's the award-winning, critically acclaimed Get Up and Go Show on AM 1450 WSTU. You're invited to call the show anytime at 772-220-9788. And now, broadcasting live from their palatial studios, here are your hosts, Evan and Bonnie. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer. Hour number three for you and me. Well, get to it. All right, I'm getting to it. I'm bored and I need some entertainment. All right, we've got the entertainment right here just for you. I got some hot gossip. All right, hot gossip? Wow, I love me some hot gossip. Wow, I'm the Gossip King. It's 8.08 on the Get Up and Go Show. Mr. Clock, would you certify that? It's now 8.08 a.m. Bonnie, I love me some hot gossip. What about you? I hate gossip. Do you I'm, really? I'm not a fan of gossip okay. at all. I love gossip. I think it causes problems. I I remember a place where I was renting from when I was all but 18 or 19. That in, was only two years ago. Yes, um, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't give away my age. Sorry, I apologize. Living in Natchitoches, Louisiana, and oh. I was uh, renting a room in this home of uh, this rich and well-known lady of mm. the neighborhood of Natchitoches. And okay. Her name was Bashy. That was her first name. Bashy. This lady was like, a, she was a tough old lady. Was she, her last name Moore by any chance? No, but it was Morrison. Get it? Bashy me more? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that because it was Bashy Morrison. Oh, wow. Okay, yep. that was close. And okay. she, uh, she would go play golf and... You know, a lot of times when she dressed in her golfing gear, she would remind me of George Burns. She had that short gray hair going, and then she would wear the sunglasses, mm -hmm. the plaid pants, maybe the yellow sweater. Oh, uh, like a, She was a real serious golfer. And, wow. But every morning I would come downstairs, and she had this uh, huge picture at the end of the stairway. Mm -hmm. And what it said was, as as you're coming close to it, it has witches around a cauldron with mm. their hands up in the air, and it would show the devil's face. Well, you're and freaking me out. as you got down closer to it, the words were written. It said, gossip, and the devil came. <laughs> so it was like one of those uh, illusional things where wow. if you're far away from it, you would see the witches at one point. 
you would see the face of the devil at another point, and then the wording when you got up really close. Wow. Gossip and the devil came. So, no, I never um, have been, like, a huge fan of uh, any kind of gossip. Okay, that's all I right. I think it causes a whirlwind of problems okay. and problems for people. Okay, that's fine. It's not a problem. I'm but not going to hold that against you. Anyway. Um, all right. Oh, I want to congratulate my ladies. My uh, ladies on the women's beach volleyball team, they mm-hmm. won the gold. And Yay! I mean, they April Ross and Alex Kleinman throughout this, um, they have been so much fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, their skills out on the volleyball volleyball court uh so yeah they won the gold april ross of course she's a veteran at it Mm -hmm. she has like uh three medals now silver she's got the bronze now the gold that she just won at tokyo she got the hat trick all three all three and yeah and i'm uh, really happy for her partner alex kleinman Mm -hmm. And that was her first Olympics, uh, therefore Alex's first gold medal. Mm -hmm. And uh, these girls played to win. Uh, They did it with fury. (laughs) And and, uh, they were just uh, really solid and and great to watch. They kicked some butt. They did. Nice. So, like, I'm really glad for them. And, you know, Evan, throughout watching this, I think that, gosh, I wonder if I could still – Play volleyball like sure this. Could. could I be this sure good could. if I sure went out could. there? Put on your your tank kini and get out there and start hitting the ball over the net back and forth, and you'll be good to go. So my question for you is: Do you think there is a Olympic sport that you could play and go out and still with some must and some fury? Yes, very much so. Which is power walking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They had it on yeah. last. You had it on yesterday. All right. They had power walking on. Do and they, I think I could compete in that. Do they do it around the mall like uh, the people used to do here? No, it was outdoors. The it, was, it was outdoors. They were doing like okay. power speed walking. Nice. So I think I could. Uh, I think I could do that. They they say that's just as good mm-hmm. as, as if you were running or mm-hmm. jogging. I um, think they should have an Olympic sport called sitting. All you do is sit. You don't move. You just sit. And you get a gold medal for who can sit the longest and not move. You or I, I don't think you would be very good at that. No, I'm, I'm I wouldn't too hyper. Be, we, would, we couldn't sit there all day. No. But, you know, 40% of Americans think that we could hold our own in at least one event at the sum, summer or winter really? Olymp- what Olympics. What would yours be? Mine, I would want to think it would be the volleyball. Really? You know, because I used to play and I uh, was like a high school setter. Oh, yeah, I played beyond high school, You were too. a center? A setter. A setter. Not a center, like in basketball. Oh, a okay. setter. Oh, okay. A setter. Like an Irish oh, setter. Oh, okay. So you were the one that set the ball up. Set the ball up. Before the spiker would spike yeah. it. So you would be the number, the second person that hits the ball. The second person that hits the ball. Because you can only hit ball. it three times in volleyball. Yep. Right? Yep. So you got the person that goes like this. The bump. The bump. The, you got the bump. The set. Then the set. And then and the then spike. The spike. Yes. Okay, and you were the setter. And that triple action. Yeah, okay. and I would be the second person to touch the ball, yes. All right. But I I played high school volleyball, and I'm proud to say that when I moved to Wassa, Wisconsin, I was on – it's funny because I was on a bar league, okay? But oh, boy. First, we got <laughs> – bar league? I, I was in a really good one, though. These girls that I met when I went to Wassa were so impressive mm-hmm. spikers. Mm-hmm. I set the ball that year, and um, in that bar league, we won the tournament. Did we you? were number one. We came on top. Now, did you guys drink before you played? Heck since no. it was a bar league, no, we were we were really playing with these girls. We were really serious about about our volleyball, wow. okay. and that didn't happen. And we were actually met in a uh, actual gymnasium where a lot of the bar leagues are outside in uh, the Wisconsin sand. We have sand volleyball, too, up there in the summer. Mm-hmm. A lot of in the sand, but we had a actual gymnasium where we would go out to this country gymnasium and uh, play. Often we'd compete there, but we Do you were all able to practice. Do you all communicate with each other anymore? You know, we don't. I have I have not kept in touch with those girls, but I remember seeing them out in the, uh, oh gosh, I don't want to give away the age, but the okay. uh, Packers were playing in the Super Bowl oh, wow. that winter too. It was right after we won our volleyball championship okay. that the Packers, and then I, w- I had been out and then uh, we, the three of us, we were all getting so discouraged because the Packers were not playing well in that Super Bowl. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't want to mention which one. That's all right. No problem. We have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, guys. 
Oh, wow. Well, hi there. Look who it is. Good morning. It's the guy that went under the knife. Oh, I'm going to be going under more than that. Are you next serious? Year. Ag- next year? Yeah, they're going to replace both my knees. Well, they they awesome. did one already, right? No, no. That one is just orthoscopic. He, oh. When he went in, he says, uh, you know, he fixed what he could. He says, but I don't, basically, I don't have any knees left. Oh, wow. You know yeah. what? If and I, you know, I don't know firsthand about this, George, but I know secondhand from somebody I've spoken with who has gotten this done, where they said that the replacement of the knee and the newest and the latest technology mm-hmm. is like I'm, I'm, I'm considering you shouldn't be so worried because oh, I'm not because I have friends that said they got theirs done. They said that their knees are much better. Really good. Like they can, right. they pick out like a perfect knee that's, that would just be like your knee. I mean that the technology is so good on it. Oh um, yeah. That's just what I hear too. And, and speaking of Olympics, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, mm-hmm. the United States plays for the gold medal. Against Eddie Japan? Alvarez, baseball. Wow. That's my boy, Eddie Alvarez. Yeah. I got to text knew- him. I got his phone number. Yeah, well, I got, I know, I well, you remember in the skating, I knew him since he was six years old. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you know, and uh, I know his mom and dad real well uh-huh. and all that. I talked I talked to him the other day. And Did everything. you? And, uh, yeah. And uh, I tell you, Mabel and and Walter. <laughs> uh huh. But uh, oh yeah. Um, but uh, geez, I mean uh, Eddie's he's unbelievable. He's a I mean he's he's I think he's better at baseball than he was at skating. Yeah, I got to know <laughs> uh, I got to know him when he was uh, over at Clover Park uh, when they had the qualifying games. Qualifying, yeah. Uh, up by us here in uh, Port St. Lucie, and he's a really super nice guy. Really super. Yeah. Nice oh guy. yeah. Yeah, he really is. Very you know. much so. So, so oh it's 6 a.m. 6 a.m. tomorrow. And actually, it's funny you say that because that's about the time I have to leave to head to Vero tomorrow because I have to announce the RBI World Series games up in uh, d- uh, the Jackie Robinson complex. Yeah, some oh. serious oh, games. Well. So I'm going to miss that. I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to set the DVR to record it. Yeah. And yeah, we've it's, got... It's a- We've got the U.S. women's basketball team too that are yeah. in great yeah. shape, and wow. they could looks like they could do it, uh, win some gold on Sunday. So they've been up on top of their game for like a really long time. Do we know what channel the uh, baseball game is on? Just out of curiosity. Um, yeah, it'll it'll be on. Well, it's NBC, but I think it's on like you know the um, um. Almost like uh, what do you call it? Um, oh my gosh, CM MSC MB MBS MSNBC or something like that. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right, I'll have to find out. I'll have to find out. All right, all right. Well, listen, um, I will give you a buzz later. Have a wonderful day. We got to run because we got some stuff we got to do here on the air. Uh, yeah. Good have luck fun. with your knees. Don't See do any later. knee knocking yeah, now. Don't do any knee knocking because we <laughs> need you. Get it? Need yeah. you. And I'll see you at oh Christmas time to cook my turkey. <laughs> and, okay. and to need some bread. Yes, need bread, too. <laughs> All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right. At least he had a little giggle about it. Yeah, he did. He he's sound, a good sport. He'd sound a little bit concerned when he called. But yeah, no, he's all right. He'll anybody be fine. going through that would be a little bit concerned. Yeah. But I think um, George will be okay. Yeah, George is going uh, yeah. to be good. So I'm excited. Uh, I didn't realize that the USA was playing uh, for the gold. Yeah. Tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning at six a.m. So I guess if they lose, they get the silver. So because uh, the the two teams are playing for the gold, so one's yeah. going to get the gold, one's going to get the silver. That sounds like yep, right about right. And That's it amazing. Looks like we have the um, most medals, with uh, China having the uh, still the most gold right now. Okay. Um, I, I believe uh, that is so too. We've been doing uh, so well this year in these games, and they're almost wrapping up. I can't believe it's come by just like that, very, yeah. very quickly. It really has. Very, it very really quickly. Has. Yep. Uh, time for the precious metals report, and it's all brought to you by our good friends at St. Lucie Jewelry and Coin. Gold is opening up. Wow, my screen looks way different this morning. There we go. Gold opening up at one thousand eight hundred dollars and 90 cents an ounce gold seems to be plummeting as of late and silver opening up 25 dollars and eight cents an ounce that's the precious metals report and it's all brought to you by our good friends at st lucie jewelry and coin jewelry and coin 
The first time I stepped into St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, I figured it would just be one of my many stops on my road to the perfect engagement ring. My fiancé means the world to me, so I wanted something extra special. I found a huge selection of engagement rings at great prices, and my worry about finding the perfect engagement ring was quickly replaced with exceptional customer service. St. Lucie Jewelry's over 400 five-star reviews really told the story. I finally picked a ring, and it was perfect. She was floored, and then the tears came. Hi. This is Hawk Levy, owner of St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins. We're now celebrating 26 years. Voted best diamond dealers, best jewelry buyers, and best jeweler year after year. Come celebrate with us in opening our third location at 1335 St. Lucie West Boulevard. We invite you to take a tour of our competition, but then come see us last. Eight twenty-one right now on the Get Up and Go Show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for news. Brought to you by Florida Blue, your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, helping families take control of their health for more than seventy-five years. Here's Bonnie with the headlines. Thank you, Evan. The feud between the White House and Governor Ron DeSantis goes on. During a White House briefing, Press Secretary Jen Psaki noted that COVID is surging in Florida. The governor has taken steps that are counter, counter to public health recommendations. Psaki called the pandemic a public health issue and not a political issue. Governor Ron DeSantis believes the state law he signed banning mask mandates will stand up in court. Speaking at Tampa General Hospital, he answered questions about a potential suit in the Tampa Bay area. It's our belief that that this should be a parent's choice. I think it flows directly from that bill, and I think we'll end up winning. The suit claims the no-mask mandate law violates local control of schools under the state constitution. Martin County School District hires more nurses, and WPTV's Todd Wilson was on hand for the emergency meeting last night and has this. Mr. Lazy, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. It's an emergency meeting with the Martin County School District. They just approved to move to hire additional nurses for the coming school year. I'm always open to hearing recommendations from our staff and from the superintendent moving forward. Superintendent John Malay says the district is working with the local Department of Health on issues of contact tracing and quarantining. Working with the local DOH will require the district to hire five additional nurses for eight weeks and one additional registered nurse for eight months of work. Each high school will have an additional RN. They will share one RN. So, and the, all of them could help each other, but one will service the middle schools. And then at the elementary level, we'll also have one RN overseeing the COVID operations. The contracted nurses will work for four and a half days during the week and a half day on Sunday. Malay says these nurses are temporary. They're waiting to find out if they've been awarded grant money to take things to the next level. That would put an additional nurse at every school. So we thought this is a good measure that in the interim period, the next eight weeks, until we find out about that extra grant, that we can still provide the services that we need. Malay says they should find out by August 15th if the district has been awarded the grant money. He says the nurses will be assigned before the new school year begins on August 11th at a cost of just over $200,000. In Martin County, Todd Wilson, WPTV News Channel 5. Sheriffs along the Treasure Coast have not sent any deputies to the Texas-Mexico border to help secure it. Governor Ron DeSantis said in June he would send law enforcement officers to stop people from crossing into the United States illegally after Arizona Governor Doug Ducey and Texas Governor Greg Abbott sent out a joint letter claiming the Biden administration had failed to secure the border. They asked for help from the other 48 states. Martin County Sheriff William Snyder joined several law enforcement officials across the state to offer deputies to send to the border. We still stand willing and ready to go, and we do back the governor's initiative to try to stem the flow down at the border because it does have a direct nexus here to Martin County, said Snyder's Chief Deputy John Budenseek. Budenseek referred to the arrest of Marvin Elon Mendoza, age 20, a Guatemalan immigrant who was arrested in connection to the sexual battery of an 82-year-old woman in her home near Stewart in May. Elon 
Mendoza immigrated to the United States as an unaccompanied minor, Snyder has said. DeSantis appears to have drawn 50 officers from Florida Highway Patrol. Neither Indian River County nor St. Lucie County Sheriff's offices sent deputies to the border, nor do they plan to, according to spokespersons from each office. If Martin County deputies were to be called into action, Budenseek said it's unclear how the office would be paid and certified to enforce laws in Texas. The sheriff's office would not deploy any deputies if it had to foot the bill, he said. Florida is reporting 20,133 new COVID-19 cases. The figure is from the Centers for Disease Control and is the second highest number of daily cases since the pandemic began. The state also added 84 new virus-related deaths. Florida utility customers are being warned of a scam. They are getting calls from people claiming to be energy company employees who threaten to shut off service if money isn't paid within minutes. Duke Energy says it's heard of over 900 such calls last month alone, and its customers were scammed out of over $14,000. And lastly, an Orlando theme park is now under new ownership. Advent Health has purchased the Holy Land Experience for $32 million with plans to develop the property into a health care complex. J.R. Richard, a two-time National League strikeout champion with the Houston Astros, whose career was cut short in 1980 by a stroke, died on Thursday at the age of 71. The team announced uh, the Astros did not provide further details. Newstime 826, we'll have weather and traffic together next. insurance or want to switch plans you can sign up for a new florida blue health plan or switch to a better one for as little as zero dollars per month if you qualify call us today 772-621-8830 or visit floridablue.com slash centers to learn more to be eligible for zero monthly cost your marketplace monthly advance premium tax credit must equal to or be more than the premium policies have limitations and exclusions benefits available in certain plans and counties florida blue and florida blue hmo are independent licensees of the blue cross and blue shield association Eight twenty-seven right now on the Get Up and Go Show with Evan and Bonnie. It's time for traffic and weather together. As I get this frog out of my throat, Bonnie, here it comes, leaping, leaping right out of there. Hey, Kermit the Frog. We do see one accident. We've been looking at this one throughout the morning on I ninety-five southbound in Hope Sound. There is a vehicle crash. It's at mile marker ninety-eight. No lanes are blocked in that area from the accident. And uh, no other accidents. That's what we're seeing right now. The latest from FHP. Your latest look at traffic. 79 in Stewart and it's 77 in Port St. Lucie. Here's our weekend update at WPTV. Your WPTV first alert forecast calls for temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s with a few showers towards the coast and a couple of spotty downpours for the morning commute. This afternoon, highs in the low 90s with feels like temperatures in the triple digits. We'll see partly sunny skies throughout the day with a 50% chance for showers and storms, mainly towards the lake. Tomorrow, morning coastal rainfall followed by a 60% chance for afternoon inland showers and storms with highs in the low 90s. Sunday, hot and humid weather continues. Highs in the low 90s, some morning showers, then everything moves west throughout the day. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall on WSTUAM 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. No hype, just facts. I'm Casey and I invite you to tune into the Casey Ingram Show at my new time, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Hear from community leaders, learn about some of our great nonprofit organizations, get the latest updates from our elected officials, and meet the candidates. Even rock and roll legends have joined the show from time to time. I'm conservative but not divisive, bringing you the talk of the community. It is a fun and interesting hour beginning at 10 a.m. every Wednesday on WSTU AM 1450 and Facebook Live at the Casey Ingram Show. 
The professionals at Mark Freckville Certified Public Accountants are proud to sponsor Treasure Coast Solutions, a community service program designed to provide information you can use, a local perspective on national issues, local solutions to meet your individual concerns. At our firm, we believe that information is knowledge, and with knowledge comes the power to have a positive impact on our lives, businesses, schools, and community. If you would like one of our professionals to address your personal financial or business concerns, please give us a call to set up an appointment at 220-3380. Don't sweat in your boxers. Call the AC Doctors at 344-3944. York, install confidence. Contact the AC Doctors, acdoctorsinc.com. What is your quality of life? The OWN Insurance Group plans on improving it on our Quality of Life radio show Tuesday mornings at 10 on both WPSL and WSTU. Hi, I'm Gary Owen of the OWN Insurance Group, along with Tom Bouvier, will help you on the road of life and make it a better one. Don't forget the Quality of Life radio show Tuesdays at 10 on WPSL and WSTU on TuneIn and Alexa. World champion Tampa Bay Bucks will kick off preseason August 14th against Cincinnati at 1 as defending champions on WSTU. The Dolphins kick off preseason August 14th at 1 in Chicago against the Bears on WPSL. The NFL 2021 is brought to you by the Quit Doc Foundation of Martin County, Max Stuckey, Stewart Estate Attorney, Nies Air, the St. Lucie Draft House, Stimmels of Stewart, Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd, and Seacoast Air Conditioning. Let's get back to the Get Up and Go Show. Here's Evan and Bonnie. 831 on the Get Up and Go Show with Evan and Bonnie, and it's time for our daily dose of space for a Friday. Here's Randy Siegel. Good morning, Randy. Good morning to you, sir. Well, it was back in 1959 that NASA launched its Explorer 6 spacecraft. This spacecraft was the first one to take photographs of the Earth from a satellite. It also served as a target vehicle for an anti-satellite missile program. The, they successfully launched a vehicle that would have intercepted it, and it came within four miles of that spacecraft. In 1961, the then Soviet Union launched cosmonaut German Titov into space. Titov orbited the Earth 17 times, which would be the equivalent of one full day in space, and returned successfully. 1969, the Russians launched their Zond 7 spacecraft headed towards the moon. This particular vehicle was the first one to take color photographs of the Earth and the moon at various distances, and it also was a spacecraft that was eventually supposed to be a craft for Russians to fly on when they went to the moon. 1978, saw the Pioneer Venus 2 spacecraft launched towards Venus. In, 20, in 1980, they, the final messages were heard from the lunar orbiter. The Viking orbiter ran out of fuel, and it was the last time they heard anything from that vehicle as it was pushed into a much higher orbit so it would not contaminate the red planet. In 2001... Our old buddy Curiosity was launched to Mars. Curiosity did a lot of great work on Mars and gave us a tremendous amount of data. It landed on this date. They're hoping that they can still get it back into some sort of operation so it can continue its work on the red planet. We also had a sample of solar wind particles return to Earth back in 2001. And lastly, the Chinese launched two vehicles, an Earth observation satellite and then a communication satellite on two successive days. Well, now is the time on the International Space Station that they're doing a tremendous amount of work, to say the least. The astronauts, namely Thomas Pasqua and Megan MacArthur, did more runs in the In Space 4 space manufacturing study. They want to see if they can develop advanced materials and microgravity that could improve space and Earth systems. The crew is also getting ready 
for the launch to take place on August 10th at 5.56 p.m. of the Cygnus resupply ship that will go to the International Space Station. MacArthur will command the Canada Arm 2 robot arm to grapple the Cygnus spacecraft at 6.10 a.m. on August the 12th. Pasquale will back her up. Then, when they get at birth to the station, they will use the Earth, the Earth astronauts and mechanisms to actually bring it into the space station. Mark Vanderhey joined Commander Hoshi, Hoshi, excuse me, gathering spacewalking tools as they will be going back out to do another set of spacewalks to install the Port 4 truss section. The Russians on board, Oleg Novitsky and Peter Dubrov, continue unpacking hardware inside the new Nukia multi-laboratory module. Novitsky also worked on water transfer from the ISS Progress 78 spacecraft, while Dubrov photographed microbes growing for a Russian science experiment. They have determined that the space station was really in danger when the Russians first docked the Nukia module, and the Nukia module started firing its thrusters without any commands. The space station rotated where it wasn't supposed to, and it continued to rotate, which caught which could have caused tremendous problems, but they were able to damp it and not have the problem. Russia will have about 10 spacewalks over the next year, and these spacewalks will lay out electrical and data cables between Nukia and the Zvezda module. They will also have uh, three cosmonauts going out, probably in January, laying out cables between the new Perchel module and the new Kia. So as they continue to expand, you're going to see a lot of spacewalk activity taking place outside of the International Space Station. NASA and Boeing are working through to determine why the valve positions had opened up on the CST-100 Starliner prior to launch. Currently, they have brought that vehicle back to its assembly building, the Vertical Integration Facility, and they're going to check out the vehicle fully. They may have to take the spacecraft off of its carrier rocket in order to examine what really went wrong with it. Had this happened in space, we could have had a major failure take place. But alas, they were able to stop what it was doing and bring it back to find out what went wrong. The VMS Eve, which is Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic spacecraft, will be not flying anytime soon. They're standing down as they upgrade that vehicle. And Virgin Galactic has reported a loss in their latest offering that they had. China has launched four spacecrafts during the last seven days. It's the first time China has been so prolific in launching satellites ranging from telecommunication satellites, Earth observation satellites, and a satellite intended to refuel their space station once they get it into orbit. We now know that the Curiosity rover that has been on Mars has spent one thousand has gone one thousand five hundred and nine feet. It's that's the elevation. It has traveled sixteen point three four miles on the red surface and has sustained three thousand one hundred and ninety nine souls. A soul is just a little bit less than an hour. So quite an achievement for a little engine. SpaceX is working very diligently with the production of their spaceship vehicle. They want to take Spaceship 20 and actually fly it into orbit and return it to Earth. It will not be a hard landing on Earth 
it will be a water landing for this particular vehicle around Hawaii. So SpaceX is been gearing up, putting thermal protection tiles on their launch vehicle. It should be quite spectacular when it actually does fly. Speaking about spectacular, NASA has fired again a sixth RS-25 engine. The RS-25 engine were originally used in the space shuttle program, but now they will be used to launch the space launch system in its large rocket for the Artemis program. In this case, the test was 50 seconds long, or around eight minutes, and they've shown that the engine is working perfectly. These are engines that previously flew on shuttles that were brought back. Now they'll have a one-and-done situation. And lastly, we want to tell you that Japan has launched into space on a rocket toys for adults. Yep, you heard me right. The Japanese are testing out bungee cords to hold people together in space to have sex. <laughs> hmm. Can I experiment with that? <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, sir. I am. The Tenga Company. Bonnie? <laughs> has been working with them. Bonnie's facial expression is priceless right now. I guess you can pretty much use a bungee cord for, for what you need to use it for. Yep. In weightless conditions. Hmm. Can I go? <laughs> Until Monday. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much. That's Randy Siegel with the Space Report. He's on the program each and every weekday at this uh, at this time. Time to head on over to Ellie's Downtown Deli where Bonnie's standing by with the most delectable treats that are out there. Bonnie? Well, we have uh, Ellie's Patty Melt. It's, this one's delicious at Ellie's Downtown Deli. You get toasted rye bread and your all-beef burger. It comes with pepper jack cheese and some sautéed onions, too. A spicy mustard on there, served with a side item of your choice. And uh, it's a delight to sit out on the patio and enjoy Mrs. Peter's fish dip at Ellie's. It's served with jalapeno, tomato, red onion, and Captain Wafers. Yes, Mrs. Peter's fish dip goes great with a glass of wine or a beer on the patio. Ellie's Downtown Deli and Stewart with their patio back open, plus they're at 50% dining inside with a full menu for pickup or delivery. Ellie's also has full dinners available for takeout, plus their fabulous desserts as well. Call 772-781-6605 to order and pick up today. They're at 18 Southeast 6th Street to stop Colorado and Stewart. Call 772-781-6605. Ellie's Downtown Deli in Stewart. 8.07 right now on the Get Up and Go Show. Actually, not 8.07, 8.42 on the Get Up and Go Show. Sorry about that. It's time for news once again brought to you by St. Lucie Jewelry and Coin for the best deals in town on any type of precious metals. Make sure and check out our good friend Hawk Levy at St. Lucie Jewelry and Coin. Bonnie standing by with the headlines. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning once again. And the city of Port St. Lucie announcing Thursday that Amazon will be building a $1 million, no, a $1 million, that is square foot fulfillment center near I-95 and Midway Road. And WPTV's Derek Lowe with the story. Once completed, the new Amazon Fulfillment Center will be the largest building in all of Port St. Lucie. It's going to be huge, a million square feet of fulfillment center. Located on the southeast corner of Midway Road and I-95. It's just really exciting to know that they're going to be able to provide over 500 jobs. Amazon is now the third distribution center planning to come to Port St. Lucie. Over $100 million of investment in our local economy. Recently, FedEx and Cheney Brothers also announced plans to join the city. Together, the three employers will create over 1,000 jobs, making Port St. Lucie a place to live and work. It's really exciting. I'm so thrilled for all of us here in Port St. Lucie. The new site will house 98 loading bays for trucks. The city's vice mayor says prior traffic concerns have been considered and corrected. I think through the planning process, they, are, they have resolved that issue with regard to turn lanes. Amazon starting salaries begin at $15 per hour. City officials say that construction will be complete by either late summer or fall of 2022. Reporting in Port St. Lucie, I'm Derek Lowe, WPTV News Channel 5. 
The Coast Guard and law enforcement looked offshore and on beaches between Wabasso and Sebastian in the second full day of a search for missing 42-year-old kayaker Donald Waters. So far, nothing has been found since his inflatable boat was pulled from the ocean by fishermen south of the Sebastian Inlet Tuesday evening. The U.S. Coast Guard, Indian River County Sheriff's Office, and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission were all involved in the second day of the search. Everything is essentially the same, said Coast Guard uh, Petty Officer 3rd Class Ryan Estrada around 5 p.m. Thursday. No changes. Uh, We still have surface and our assets out there. Next year, Florida communities could start seeing some of the dollars from a large settlement against pharmaceutical companies blamed for fueling the opioid pandemic. WPTV's Megan McRoberts with more. We're definitely ready to get it. A survivor and now an advocate for opioid abuse, John Nelson is closely watching the settlement agreements being made by big pharma companies blamed for feeding the opioid crisis. We're going to look into it. He's hopeful he might be able to see some of that settlement money trickling down to the states to support his nonprofit, FamiliesRecover.org. Is it going to make a difference? depends on how they divvy it up. Cities and counties across Florida with the Florida Attorney General's office have spent more than a year pulling together a mutual agreement that says where the money will go once settlements start getting paid out, expected by late 2022. Yeah, we represent a few dozen cities and counties around the state. Attorney Eric Romano represents Fort Pierce and St. Lucie County. Particularly South Florida has seemed to be kind of the epicenter Um of the opioid epidemic. That's why Romano says Florida will stand to gain about 7% of the settlement dollars going to all 50 states and thousands of local communities. So far, a $26 billion settlement has been reached with more than $1.3 billion of that headed to Florida. This mutual agreement will break out payments to the counties, state, and cities over 18 years. One of the concerns that everybody involved had was making sure that governments don't take money from the opioid settlement and use it for other projects. Romano says that's why this agreement also lays out how the money can be used, including supporting treatment options, giving to community groups, education, and connecting people with resources. Personally, I think it should go to victims. Advocates. Nelson feels the settlement is a drop in the bucket for the pain caused by the opioid distributors, but hopes it can make some impact on curbing the epidemic. Still rampant. It's full blown. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. Norwegian Cruise Line in Florida are playing tug of war over which court should hear a challenge to the state's ban on so called vaccine passports. Governor DeSantis wants the case moved to Tampa. Norwegian wants the case heard where it's headquartered in Miami. Today, a judge is hearing arguments in Norwegian's request for a preliminary injunction against the vaccine passport ban, which would prevent the cruise line from requiring customers to show shot status. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz says DeSantis has no right to stop a private business from getting this information. It's outrageous that the governor is trying to stop an industry like that is as important to Florida's economy as the cruise line industry who want to require vaccines. No word yet on when a ruling could come. Wendy Grossman, Miami. Going to the grocery store or the mall? The city recommends you mask up. Going to City Hall? The city requires you to. The city commission Thursday approved a mask requirement for city buildings regardless of vaccination status and recommended people wear masks indoors while in public places. The new policies passed during a special meeting that was called last minute in response to the recent surge in COVID-19 cases locally and statewide. It was the first meeting in months where all commissioners wore masks and chairs in the meeting chambers were socially distanced, a signal of health officials backtracking on their previous calls to loosen precautionary measures for the vaccinated. The commission gave city manager David Diaz the flexibility to withdraw or reenact the mask requirement and recommendation as needed. Governor Ron DeSantis in May signed the executive order restricting local governments from placing mask mandates on private businesses. And lastly, a guy in a wheelchair fell on the tracks at a subway station in New York on Wednesday. And there was a random guy who jumped down and saved him right before the next train came barreling in. And other people were on hand on the platform helping out to pull them both back up. (laughs) 
Dallas Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones did not say when it would happen, but he made an announcement Thursday night that many hoped would come sooner rather than later. Jimmy Johnson will be inducted into the Cowboys' ring of honor. Johnson will be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this weekend. News time is 849. We'll have weather and traffic together next. Insurance Group plans on improving it on our Quality of Life radio show Tuesday mornings at 10 on both WPSL and WSTU. Hi, I'm Gary Owen of the Owen Insurance Group, along with Tom Bouvier. We'll help you on the road of life and make it a better one. Don't forget the Quality of Life radio show Tuesdays at 10 on WPSL and WSTU on TuneIn and Alexa. right now the time on the Get Up and Go Show. It's time for traffic and weather together. Bonnie? We're not finding any accidents to report at the moment, Evan. Our major highways, they're up to speed right now. And St. Lucie County, Martin County, yeah, the roads generally, they are looking clear. Drive safely if you're heading out. And that's your latest look at traffic. Jensen Beach is at 79 It's a clear sky in Hankel, Finland in 67. Here's our weekend weather update, WPTV. Your WPTV first alert forecast calls for temperatures this morning in the mid to upper 70s with a few showers towards the coasts and a couple of spotty downpours for the morning commute. This afternoon, highs in the low 90s with feels like temperatures in the triple digits. We'll see partly sunny skies throughout the day with a 50% chance for showers and storms mainly towards the lake. Tomorrow, morning coastal rainfall followed by a 60% chance for afternoon inland showers and storms with highs in the low 90s. Sunday, hot and humid weather continues. Highs in the low 90s, some morning showers, then everything moves west throughout the day. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall on WSTUAM 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. time I stepped into St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, I figured it would just be one of my many stops on my road to the perfect engagement ring. My fiancé means the world to me, so I wanted something extra special. I found a huge selection of engagement rings at great prices, and my worry about finding the perfect engagement ring was quickly replaced with exceptional customer service. St. Lucie Jewelry's over 400 five-star reviews really told the story. I finally picked a ring, and it was perfect. She was floored. And then the tears came. Hi, this is Hawk Levy, owner of St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins. We're now celebrating 26 years. Voted best diamond dealers, best jewelry buyers, and best jeweler year after year. Come celebrate with us in opening our third location at 1335 St. Lucie West Boulevard. We invite you to take a tour of our competition, but then come see us last. Hi, I'm Chris Hodgins with My Florida Insurance Broker, and I'm here today with my daughter, Sage. Hello. Sage, why don't you tell everybody what kind of insurance we do? Home insurance, car insurance, life insurance, and flood insurance. If you've had a rate hike or two or five, hopefully not ten, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Sage, what's our number? 772-617-6777. What's the name of our company again? My Florida Insurance Broker. If you have a suggestion for the show, we would love to hear from you. Send us an email to wstumorningshow at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the Get Up and Go Show. Here's Evan and Bonnie. And you know, whenever you hear that music, it puts a smile on your face. Bonnie, because you know what time it is, don't you? A priest, a rabbi. That's right. A priest, a rabbi, but we are minus the priest this morning. So joining us on our Zoom session right now is Matthew uh, Durbin, Rabbi Matthew Durbin. Uh, Good morning, Rabbi Durbin. How are you and the family today? We are doing really well. How are you? Life is good. There's that microphone. We're still waiting for you to get the headset. You know, I mean, we're we're still waiting on that. 
but that's okay. But, you know, I have to say, the screen is looking a lot better today because there is now beauty entwined in the screen. And that is the rabbi's mom is going to be pinch hitting for Father Christian on the show today, Bonnie. That's just amazing. What a beautiful young lady that I am looking at right now. And I think it would be very fitting. And Rabbi, I'm I'm going to have to take something away from you today and and rely on your mom to give us. And by the way, um, good morning, Mrs. Durbin. How are you today? Welcome to the program. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. This is something we do every week before the show goes on. And um, every week we do a Yiddish word of the day. And normally your son would give us the Yiddish word of the day. So I'm going to turn to the rabbi's mom, Mrs. Durbin. Notice I have respect. Mrs. Durbin. I don't say by first name. My parents raised me correctly. Mrs. Durbin, I want to ask you for the Yiddish word of the day and put a meaning behind it, if you would, please. Okay, so the Yiddish word for the day is mensch. Mensch. And okay, could mensch. you give us a meaning for mensch and use it in a sentence? Uh, someone who, uh, someone who is proper, someone who is caring, someone who is a. Um, I don't know. Help me out here, Matthew. One word. So, so <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think I think we're looking at you know the word mensch in terms of you know being a good, a deserving person, a one of great moral character, uh, uh, one who embodies the ethics and the values of uh, model citizenship. Okay, so I have a I have a perfect sentence for this. My co-host Bonnie Ashley is a great example of a mensch. Is that correct? Correct. That would be correct. There you go, Bonnie. You're a mensch. We thank you so much. And uh, Mrs. Durbin, I think I'm... It's Jerry. It is what? Jerry. Jerry? It's Jerry. Um, Jerry, we met you before, too. I think you came into the uh, studio with uh, Rabbi Durbin one time, and we had you on the air live in here, if I'm not mistaken, quite a while back, right? Wow. Did I do Mm. that? Oh, it's my senior's moment. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> Maybe you just I don't. didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this one. So I'm really, really uh, going blind on all of this. But if, if, if it sounds good. It's good. All right. Very it's good. Great, and we're glad to have you back. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. So, you know, Matthew, I got to tell you. I know Father Christian always says to you, you have the best looking hair and I can see where it comes from because your mom's hair is so on point this morning. I can see where the apple does not fall far from the tree. Mm. Thank you. (laughs) Your mom is laughing so hard right now. You do have that full head of hair. It's so it's so nice. Your mom was like, "What did we get into this morning? I thought this was just going to be me and my son talking." <laughs> but anyway, so what's on tap today, Rabbi Durbin, for the show? Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do exactly what you just said, uh, Evan. Is um, you know my mom uh, my mom is one of the the greatest, if not the uh, major influencer to um, in my life, in mm-hmm. terms of the the direction and the profession that I chose, mm-hmm. uh, and just kind of look a little, a little bit about my mom's life. Uh, you know, she's been an educator in our religious school back home for you know for decades, um, and just inspiring the youth. And you know, what was her upbringing like growing up in a very traditional Jewish household? And you know, what were some of the um, what were some of the messages that were communicated to her by her parents? And you know, what the what the future holds? What 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 she would like to see? Uh, as we go forward in this fragile and uh, challenging and strained world. Wow, I can't wait. I'm really excited. I'm really actually looking forward to hearing this. A son 
and mom together, a rabbi and the rabbi's mom. It's all going to be happening on a priest and a rabbi, minus the priest, a little bit after 9 o'clock this morning. I'll make sure and listen in, folks. Don't go anywhere, folks. That's coming up next along with the news. Remember, if you have good values on the inside, you won't look for validation on the outside. Right, Bonnie? Yeah, take care. Have a nice weekend and hope to see you safely back here on Monday. That's right. We're WSU Stewart, Martin County's Heritage Station. The news is coming up next. Don't go anywhere.